What's up? What's up? Hmm. Let me get a couple other things in order. I don't know why it says that. It's weird. Um, all right. <laughs> Divinity has come for us. Yes. Yes. You look like Destiny. I don't know if that's a... Is that a compliment? <laughs> uh... What's up, RJ? Sir Lurkington. Jax, of course. Dadai Nacho. CHW. Wings of Pestilence. There's actually like a lot of stuff to talk about today. That's what happens when I don't like, um... Uh, that's, uh, that's what happens when I don't hop on for a few days. I'm gonna bring the music down. It's weird. Okay. There we go. Oh man. <laughs> I was going to play different music today, but I'm just like, dude, just Divinity soundtrack just goes so damn good for streaming. At least for like trying to like stay focused and stuff. And I think it's kind of easy listening to. In my honest opinion. In my honest opinion. Let me do a couple things real quick. Uh, Bellatro is amazing if you haven't played it yet, by the way. Um, Bellatro. Oh, Bellatro. Um, I, I've played it. Um, I only have, I only have like, uh, like three hours in it or something like that, but it is, uh, it's addicting. <laughs> it is addicting to say the very least is, uh, yeah, yeah. I played it basically all the way up into the point that we uh, that we hopped on uh, that we hopped on stream, mostly because uh, and and to, I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't want to uh, stop playing. Part of me was like, you know what? Screw these guys. I'm just gonna Bellatro. That's what I was going to do. That is what I was going to do. So, you know what? We'll take this. This. I'm just working on something in the background. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Uh, do you, th uh, you think season four of Diablo 4 will breathe new life back into the game? Or is it Dune? Is it Dune? Um... I think one of the biggest, uh, I think one of the biggest hurdles for Diablo 4 is to, like, redeem its, uh, like, redeem itself in the eyes of, like, the general consumers. Because the problem is, is that, like, no matter what they do to the game, I don't really think it's going to make um, any major difference in how people perceive the game online, if that makes any sense. Because, like, you know, like, for me personally, right, like, I've made a lot of content, a lot of video content that's been, well originally very big very high on diablo very like diablo 4 I'm, I'm so excited for this game uh this is you know i can't wait for this uh meanwhile at the exact same time i've also made a lot of boo diablo 4 bad d4 bad but i mean and it's not like any of my criticisms weren't justified my criticisms were justified i, I know that i think anybody would be able to say that's true. Uh, but I think the problem is, is that you have far too many, like, it's almost too fun, if that makes any sense. It's too fun to, uh, to meme on Diablo because it's been so bad for so long. You know what I mean? And 
there's a lot that they have to do to be able to get that back on track and get people to want to believe in the brand and the the other difficulty for them as well is the fact that like i mean like people just don't like blizzard i mean let's be real like people don't like blizzard i don't i know most people don't why would you they haven't really done anything to earn our trust uh or to want us to like uh, it's actually funny because you know there's been like discussions where people are like you know do you want uh you know i've seen recently some discussions that have popped up because people viewers think content creators want certain games to fail because you know they can make content out of the failure but what they fail to realize is that good games are so much healthier for content for like just content reasons in general that it wouldn't make any sense for for us to want a game to fail if that makes any sense it's so much easier for me to make videos and discuss you know the successes of games talk about the games that i'm having fun playing with playing talk about you know the games that other people are having fun playing because that's what we like more than anything should i tell you you want to you want to know what kind of content does the best confirmation bias content does the best i mean let's be real that's what players really want they want to they want to be told that they're doing things you know that they're playing the right game not that they're playing the wrong game if that makes any sense Can you help me get this game, man? I've been desperately trying to play, but you can't make the payment. What do you mean you can't make the payment? I'm not Steam support. Sorry, I'm just like working on something in the background. I'm almost done. That works fine. That'll fix the uh I'll fix the problem. There we go. Um, edit. Do that. And then call it a day. Okay. Um, all right. What are you guys talking about here? Uh, there's the whole subsection of YouTube built upon theory craft theory crafting for Friday night at Freddy at Freddy's. There are YouTube legends born because of that, simply because games are good. Yeah, when games are good, that's what you want. Like, uh, here's the thing: Do you think? Do you guys think I have fun talking about when games are doing bad? I would rather the games be good. You know what I mean? And that's like a really weird. That's like a really hard. <sighs> I'll be honest with you. Like, that's a really difficult thing when it comes to you know, like making YouTube videos and stuff as like, I want to make videos first and foremost, because I like talking about video games. Second, because, you know, I like discussing games with fellow people in the community. I want, you know, I'm also trying to make entertaining content, but at the same time, what ends up happening is, is that you find yourself in a position in which so many people just want to hear you say the thing that they want to hear rather than the thing that they don't want to hear. 
And as a result, what you end up getting is, well, a lot of the feedback that I got with, um, um, a lot of the feedback that I got with Dragon's Dogma 2. Like, I've had people that are like, dropping comments that have been watching my videos for, you know, almost a year. And they're like, you know, you said that you love Dragon's Dogma 1. And then to see what you say about Dragon's Dogma 2 just makes me believe that you're incredibly dishonest. And it's like, bro, it's the exact opposite of that, if it's anything else. Like, what are you talking about? Me coming forward and saying that I love the game, that I'm enjoying it, however, it also didn't meet my expectations in certain ways, and being able to criticize the game is the whole reason why content like this exists in the first place. It's our freedom as consumers to be able to criticize the things that we own and the things that are in the market. And for the people that are like jumping to the defense of a game and even some of the weird takes that I've seen lately where they're like, oh, you, you know, uh, if you buy a game with microtransactions, you can't uh, you can't have an opinion about it. Because it obviously doesn't bother you that much. It's like, no, are you, are you kidding me? What are you what are you talking about? You know what I like? What do you what do you mean? I, I can't criticize the things that I own because I want to get better products in the end. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. I've been a gamer since I'm 16 and now 45. Helldivers 2 has hit uh, many fun points. I find it difficult to get angry at uh, angry at the bugs that happen sometimes. Yeah, and that's one of the other things too. Is that you know it's it's also trying to. Put things into perspective. I, I said this during one of my last streams, but like people are just so terrified of nuance. People are so terrified to say that, you know, there's a little bit more to, you know, what's, um, you know, how we interact with things, how we like things. And instead of just talking, instead of just living in reality, people want to live in a fantasy world where they think that people need to live up to, you know, these unrealistic ideals that don't even make sense in the context of their own lives because they don't even live that way to begin with. And I think Helldivers 2 is a really good example of that. Well, you, oh, well, you didn't complain very much about the bugs and crashes in Helldivers 2, but you you immediately complain about the frame rate issues in, Held, in, in Dragon's Dogma 2. It's like, of course I would. One is a $70 premium title made by one of, one of the biggest video game companies in the entire industry. Yes, my expectations for a company like that is that the, the quality of the product day one should live up to the standards of that price tag and that company. However, Arrowhead Studios is a studio that I've never heard of before until Helldivers 2. I haven't played any of their games. Their other two games or their other three games, I think, though like have niche popularity, weren't massive hits, didn't have this many players playing it. This is their first foray into what I would consider as like kind of sub triple A more than anything else. But it's one of those things where it's like, we look at a game like Helldivers 2 and it's easier for us to forgive some of the mistakes because, well, it's kind of expected from a company like that. And it's not saying that we don't want a higher quality product or it's not saying that we shouldn't expect to have, you know, the a higher quality product or a working product the day of a game's release, but our levels of expectations are completely different. Like, how do we not recognize that? It's no different than if I went into a, it's no different if I went into McDonald's and bought a hamburger, or if I went into a five-star restaurant and bought a hamburger. If I went into a five-star restaurant that is charging me twice the price as McDonald's, more than twice the price, it'd be like more like 10 times the price, but that other restaurant's charging me 10 times the price as McDonald's is, and they serve me a McDonald's hamburger, I'm going to ask questions. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? What is going on? Um, I really want to get Dragon's Dogma 2, but I'm scared about the performance issues on my PC. I would just wait for a patch to come through. And here's the thing. I've said this a million times. The game is great. The game's awesome. I have no problems with it. Like, I mean, I have problems with it, but like as a game, I think the game is awesome. And it sucks that a lot of the dialogue has been captured by like microtransactions and the performance of the game rather than well, just how damn good the game is or where the game's actual failings are. You know what I mean? Because the game does have failings. The game does have some things where I'm just like, bro, it's we're like repeating history with Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen, and Dragon's Dogma. Uh, single, uh, thousands of people attacked Jawstrife Haze 
because of a single microtransaction in Dragon's Dogma 2 in a 30 minute video. Simply put, he said, uh, you can buy fast travel without you can buy it in the game too. That doesn't matter. And the thing is, is that uh, like, uh, like I, apl I applaud Josh for making a follow-up video and farming these and farming these idiots because like he doesn't need to qualify it. He doesn't need to qualify it. Like I, it, it's also, it, it's, it's insane that, uh, like the expectations that people will put on folks that make like videos or write articles and stuff sometimes because they're looking for like all context, all levels of context. Make sure it's filled with every bit of nuance. However, none of the people that are commenting have, you know, any, like, don't even give a shit about the nuance to begin with, if that makes any sense. Can't sit, can't stop playing Dragon's Dogma 2. I've had a blast playing it. I haven't had any, uh, like, I, I love it. Microtransactions in Helldivers 2 are pu purely optional. One week collected super credits by cutting edge war bond, no cash out of pocket. Yeah, and, and that's also like the weird thing too. I've had a lot of people try to come back and like want to, you know, compare uh, microtransactions in a live service game to microtransactions in a single player $70 game. And it's just like, guys, what, what, what are we, what are we doing here? It's like I said before, with all the other people that are like, you know, oh, but it's worse in this game. Why haven't you talked about this? Well, like one, I've only been making YouTube videos for a year. So if you expect me to retroactively go through every single game that I've played over the last, you know, 10 years, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it? <laughs> uh, PC gaming uh, works best with delayed gratification purchases. I still haven't bought Cyberpunk but it's getting there. Cyberpunk's already good to go, man. I, I played Cyberpunk all the way through and uh, it's one of the best games that I've played in a long time. Uh, when I bought Cyberpunk 2077, I played it too long to be able to return it, which sucks, but I played it for like six hours initially and was like, well, this is garbage. Like it didn't run well. You know, I bought it on launch day, right? And, uh, um, and then I didn't play it until they did the big, you know, the big update with um, Phantom Liberty. And I played it all the way through, then played the DLC all the way through. It was fantastic. Gorgeous game. Gorgeous great game. Incredible storytelling. Probably one of the best games in the last 10 years as well. Uh, should I get the game Dragon's Dogma 2 or wait until it gets 60 FPS on PS5? I'm gonna be honest, I don't really see it getting 60 FPS on PlayStation 5. I mean, they're already they're already talking about a console refresh for, for PlayStation 5 to begin with. You know what I mean? Well, see, that's the problem. The thing is, is that um it's just the way that people interact with media and the people interact with critical thinking in general. There's not a lot of critical thinking being done when people are you know, interacting online. Everything's super reactionary. You see a headline on it. You see a headline. You see a thumbnail. You know what I mean? I think Asmongold's a really good example of this where you have people that are like judging him on his thumbnails, you know? And they, they don't even know the contents of the video or the opinion that's even in there. And they're still making like, you know, full opinions based off the thumbnail and title. And it's just like, what are you guys doing? But those are the exact self-same people that will say, don't read um don't read head you know don't read just don't just go off of a headline don't use clickbait articles and stuff like that sir neon stripe with the 50 dollars. jesus christ man thank you that's incredibly generous holy um love the content got a fan here uh thanks for turning me on to dragon's dogma 2 enjoying it even through the bad performance in the city uh problem i have playing that uh hell divers 2 caused me to love both games and finding time to play them yeah yeah i'm glad you're enjoying them man i'm glad you're enjoying them and that's the, that's the that's the thing as a game as a game just like strife said like <laughs> dragon's dogma 2 is fucking sick it's great it's a great game there are other things that the game needs to work on but it's a great game but that doesn't take away from the fact that we need to you know we just need to have context when we're looking at these games it doesn't mean that we can't criticize it. It doesn't mean that we can't say that the performance should be better. It doesn't mean that, um, I, I think that, um, cause like I have complaints about the game already. 
Like I was playing with like Mark was playing the other day and he accidentally beat the game. He didn't realize he was like that far into the story. And there were so many other things that he wanted to do that he didn't get the opportunity to do. So he just reloaded he just reloaded his his save before then, his last instay, and then started playing from there because, you know, um from a lot of other people too, I'm seeing like the complaint that uh it's almost kind of a like a reset almost. It feels like you're just playing drag like it's a different story, obviously, and stuff, but I have a I have a seek I have a, a, a um a sinking suspicion that they withheld a end game, like a real end game for Dragon's Dogma 2. Everfall, Bitter Black Isle, stuff like that. I think they withheld that to sell it as DLC later. Which sucks. Because you already had the blueprints. You already made Dragon's Dogma and Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. So, you know, you, you could have made this game that and then more, right? But, I, you know, to be honest with you, I just don't think that's how companies are wired anymore. I don't think companies are wired to do that. You know, one of the things that I was like discussing, like I, I was, I don't, I don't think I was even talking to anybody about it. Well, I was talking to myself. That's who it was. <laughs> Something I was talking to myself about. Um. So, you know, I look at a game like Elden Ring, and I don't really think that, I don't think that game companies are wired AAA specifically. I don't think AAA is wired to pull that kind of stuff off. I just don't think they are. I don't think that a lot of the major players in gaming, outside of obviously the, um, you know, like, you know, really cool independent studios that are out there that are still making AAA games and stuff, but a lot of the major players in AAA, I just don't think that the industry is wired to make games like Elden Ring, where it's just this like full, beefy, I paid $70 and I got, or $60, it was $60, I think. I paid $60 and I got $60 out of that thing. I got more than $60 out of that thing. It's like living a second life playing that game because there's just so much content. There's so much to do, so many different ways to play it. Uh, you know, so many things to do after you finish and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And I don't think that, I just don't think that a lot of the industry is wired to do that kind of stuff anymore because they're, they're so trained and it's this current generation of like developers, like the new generations of developers that have come into the industry. Because keep in mind, you know, the guys that made games 20, 30 years ago or 20 years ago or 15 years ago even are starting to retire from the industry because they've been in it for so long. Look at how old some of the guys are that are the heads and some of the creators of some of our favorite games of all time. Some of these guys maybe only have five or another five or 10 years in the industry left at most. You know, maybe they, I mean, obviously it's not, you know, a physically demanding job. So maybe they can keep going for longer. Uh, but you're going to see some of these guys retire. And as such, you're going to have an entire industry that has been trained on this idea of DLC microtransactions, um, you know, bite-sized games because they want to be able to trickle in content later, right? Because the funny thing is, is that, you know, we've gotten away from the idea that uh, people don't really talk about withholding content as much, but... It's a fact. Every single game, probably just about every single game for the most part, not all of them, obviously, there are exceptions, Baldur's Gate 3, stuff like that, you know what I mean? But there is a lot of these companies that have withheld content because they plan to have that content to deliver it on a different date. Like, they've already been working on it. It could have been there, but they didn't plan to release it with the full release of the game. And you're going to have a lot of games that are going to come out in the future that I think that after they've been kind of trained on this mentality, this is the only thing that we're ever going to see. You know what I mean? Like we're just not going to see these big thick games that really meet our expectations or give us a fulfilling experience right out of the gate. Instead, it's gonna be like, yeah, that was good, but man, I wish there was more. And that's what they want because that's what they want you to think. That's what they want you to feel because they want you to get hooked so that they can sell you more stuff later, right? It's not from a business perspective, it's genius, but from a customer satisfaction, it's not. And I think that's one of the, I think that's one of the reasons Destiny 1, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why, like, no, I've noticed lately, at least over the last five years specifically, that like consumer sentiment around the video game industry is getting like stark. It's stark. I mean, like, 
none of us like most of the companies that are out there and a ton of people like the most active voices in video game communities are now siding with companies that aren't even uh that aren't even in uh you know not like not even like uh releasing major titles if that makes any sense there used to be a system seller game for each generation we don't see that anymore because games are designed being pushed forward monetization is yeah yeah and that's the other thing too you know because i've seen a lot of people have the discussion about you know what game uh Sven Vinka posted on Twitter and he's like, I feel like we st like, cause he saw like the console refresh thing conversation coming up and that how like this current console generation is probably coming to its end. And one of the things that he said is like, I, he's like, I feel like we don't even have a, like a con or a generation defining game yet. You know, why are things moving? Why, why are things happening like this? And then somebody had commented, they're like, it's because you made the game mate. <laughs> and it's like, but yeah, Baldur's Gate three, but it still doesn't really feel like Honestly, it doesn't even feel like either console, usually like the like Xbox or um, PlayStation will drop a game that's just like earth shattering for that for that console generation. Right. And neither one have been able to really do that. And uh, and actually, you know what, that that kind of that segues super well into something that I wanted to talk about today. Because, by the way, I don't want games to fail. But I am sure fine with, uh, I, I'm completely fine with some of these companies failing. Uh, because it's the only way for them to be able to learn lessons. They have to learn it, they have to learn it through their money. Because if they don't learn it through the money, they won't learn it anywhere, any way else. You know what I mean? Uh, wouldn't mind you playing Helldivers 2 while you, uh, while you chat. Would you ever do that? Are you, are you saying, would I play with my chat? Are you saying, like, do what I'm doing now while playing Helldivers 2? I, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. I mean, I still do a little bit, but not not nearly as much. So I saw this. Uh, uh, Microsoft's head of gaming has claimed that the decision to cut 1,900 jobs at Xbox was ultimately resulting from a concerning lack of growth in the game and in, in the industry and i mean i'm not really popular on twitter but I, I like i responded to this yes chat to the audience while playing i can't like not do, while doing stuff like this no there's no way um i said the lack of growth in in is only in triple a with over budgeted recycled ips that don't appeal to the consumers anymore independent studios have been growing just fine Baldur's Gate 3, Helldivers 2, Last Epoch, and Pal World all competed on AAA sales with a fraction of the resources and budget. This whole layoff to me personally reads, our management is underqualified to do their jobs and our, oversp and our, our overspending has led to us having to let go of workers because of our incompetence. Consumers are still buying games. They're just not buying your games. And this is what I believe. Genuinely. Genuinely, this is what I believe. When I see these companies coming out and talking about how uh, tri AAA games just aren't sustainable anymore, uh, we had to lay off because we see a concerning lack of growth in the industry. Last time I checked, Hogwarts Legacy sold a insane amount last year. It oversold any Call of Duty game over the last few years, which is insane. Baldur's Gate 3, a turn-based CRPG, sold on the same level as Diablo 4. Helldivers 2 sold more than Spider-Man 2. It's not that there's a concerning lack of growth. It's a concerning lack of growth in your specific sector. People are buying games. They're just not buying their games. And that's the problem. That's the issue for them. But they just don't come around to it. Which means they didn't hit record profits this year, so everything must be bad. It's not even like hitting record profits. I think it genuinely just comes down to people are not interested in the stuff that used to sell.
People just aren't interested in the stuff that used to sell. I'll be honest. I'll be real with it. Look at the games that have sold recently. It's like, and it's not to say that, uh, you know, these other games aren't selling, you know, decently well as, like, as well, but not compared to some of these more original games. No. When you have a game like Last Epoch, which is made by a bunch of Redditors and sells like 3 million copies or something like that, with a, and we're talking like a fraction of the budget of Diablo 4, right? Yeah, okay, it didn't sell 10 million copies in two weeks or whatever Diablo 4 did originally. Yeah, okay, it didn't, it, it didn't sell that. But it still sold 3 million with like, what, a third of the budget? Probably not even a third, probably a tenth. Sequels and remakes aren't interesting. That's the other thing too. How many sequels and remakes do you see? And in some cases they make sense, right? But here's a really good example. Look at PlayStation and look how much look how much they recycle The Last of Us. I mean, it's over and over and over and over again. I feel like Naughty Dog doesn't even make original property anymore. They just recycle everything that they've already made. So of course PlayStation's going to be freaking out because I'm sorry, when you guys don't come out with anything original, when you guys aren't dialing in and trying to figure out what consumers like or what consumers want, what's going to happen? Dragon's Dogma 2 get better since that update? I don't think it's had an update. Yeah, they haven't updated Dragon's Dogma 2 yet. They All they did with Dragon's Dogma 2 is just post something that said that they were going to update it. That's it. What a waste to remaster The Last of Us Part 2. The game isn't that old at all. Exactly. And that's the thing. Like, you have you have customers that are asking those questions that are like, why are you making this when instead you guys could be, you know, investing your time in something that we actually want or something we haven't played before? Not for the cost of development. That's the difference. They're spending too much on devving versus smaller studios on top of that. $300 million games are... are or just okay. Yeah, and that's the other thing too, is that they're spending so much more money, absurd amounts of money in comparison to some of these other independent studios, and those independent studios are still making a better product at the end of the day. That's the other thing. The money that they're spending isn't resulting in them making better games. It's just resulting in them spending money for no reason. That's like when back when we, uh, we watched it on stream, that interview with Sven Vinka and GameSpot. Like, he said it right there. He's like, you know, it, it, it's frustrating because, you know, you see the mistakes that these companies are making. They're not budgeting their games properly. And because of that, they are overspending. And then what ends up happening is, is that they end up having to lay off. And then they make an acquisition and they buy another company and then realize that, oh, now we're just still in the exact same boat where we're spending even more money. You know what I mean? Like looking like looking at this, looking at this with, 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 with Xbox, it's like, what did you got? You guys just bought Activision Blizzard King. So like what blows my mind with this as well is it's like, did you guys not foresee that you were already having problems with the games that you were selling and that also even to an extension Blizzard was having some issues as well. And you didn't think to yourself like, hey, maybe it's not a good idea for us to spend all of this money. No, apparently that didn't cross their mind. So it's like, Self-inflicted wounds, man. Self-inflicted wounds. Microsoft, Sony, and large corp, uh, large corp devs. Outsized, uh, outsized gains for a long time. Now they're being outcompeted, and their outsized gains are rotating away by more passionate people. <laughs> yeah, and that's the other thing too. It really is. It really is just coming down to other studios making better games. Mark, thank you for the five gifted. Make sure you guys thank him. Uh, there was always going to be layoffs because of a certain amount of duplication uh, in labor that's not needed. Well, and that's the thing. So you had a lot of these companies that hired really heavy during COVID because they, you know, they, they saw gaming take off and they're like, we need to make even more, right? We need to make even more game, make even more games. We need to, you know, the, uh, the demand for games was up. So they were trying to bring supply up to meet those demands. And what ended up happening is, is that, 
well, you know, obviously the world went back to normal for the most part. The Lush, thank you for the Prime. Really appreciate that. Two months in a row, too. Thank you. Um, And then things have equaled out. And I, I think the funny thing is I still think demand is still just as high. I think there's still just as many people that are playing games that want games. But the problem is, is that we just don't want the same shit we've already played a thousand times. I think that really that's really what it comes down to. We just don't want the same stuff that we've played every single time. Let's be real. Uh, they also... Uh, they also just never take it on the chin. I mean... Uh, is, is any time a couple bad quarters, uh, they start to fire everybody? And that's the other thing, too, is that, like... But that's the expectation that they have as a... publicly traded company, right? Is that their board of directors and their, and their shareholders are going, well, you need to do something about this. You know, and they don't want to hear, okay, we're going to make better games. No, they're going to want to see something immediate. And the only immediate thing a video game company can do is either add microtransactions or fire people. <laughs> That's it. Raise prices, right? So those are like their immediate fixes that they go to. But the thing is, is that firing people, adding microtransactions and raising prices, none of those things benefit the consumer as well, which only leads to even more consumer unrest, which then pushes us even further towards independent studios. That's what happens. It's a vicious cycle where they keep shooting themselves in their own foot and then asking why it hurts. <laughs> uh, the, the worst buy was Activision. Microsoft uh, said that they were going to fix, yet they lied. And they're selling Godzilla, King Kong, Star King, and Shimo skins uh, for the new movie for $20. Yeah, I mean, like that, none of that stuff's going to change. Are you kidding me? Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard King because of Call of Duty. The money that Call of Duty makes. They're not ever, they're not even interested in like uh exclusives and stuff, which I I think kind of sucks for the uh for the Xbox fans specifically because for the Xbox fans like those guys are probably looking forward to hopefully Xbox, you know, leveraging those teams that they purchased from Blizzard and Activision to be able to make some really cool exclusive content for Xbox, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think that they're just going to use it as just a cash cow to try to, you know, reap the uh, rewards of how well m most of their titles will sell. Uh, but the problem is, is that I can't imagine that the... I can't imagine the gains are worth it, though. Because the problem at Candy Crush 2 is a really good one. Yeah, I can, uh, they also have... What's the other one? King has another another one that's really big as well. Clash of Clans. So they have some big money makers, but the thing is, is so far as like new projects, no, new projects or new products, that's where they're that's where they're kind of hit on. You know what I mean? Uh, looking at Blizzard as an example, I mean not even look at Blizzard. Look at Blizzard and Activision together. What was the last new product that they put out into the market that succeeded? For Blizzard, it was Hearthstone. It was either Hearthstone or it was Overwatch 2, I guess. But it, Overwatch 2 more or less ruined that community. The game's still like relatively popular, but not nearly as popular as it used to be. A potential survival game that got canceled. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Um. What's Activision done that's been new? Modern Warfare 2, 2023? <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's like, uh, uh, Call of Duty's basically become like FIFA or Madden. Yeah, nothing I can think of. So like... And that's one of my worry. That's one of my worries as well. Is that you know I was talking about before, where I like you know I look at a game like Elden Ring or something like that, something that's just that beefy and that uh, original feeling, right? Baldur's Gate Three is another really good example of that. Hell Divers, I think, is a really good example of that. That like original experience. Publish Sekiro. Not here. Um, that like original experience that I think a lot of players are craving because so many of these companies have just been recycling the same IPs over and over and over and over and over again. And while it's continued to work for a long time, at one point in time, it's not. And what happens when all you do 
is recycle the same IPs over and over again. You lack the creativity and the originality to be able to make anything new. And I think that's, I think that's what's going on. And I think that's probably one of the biggest dangers that AAA is facing. And I think it's one of the reasons why a lot of these companies are getting really nervous is because they're looking at it and they're like, uh, you know, we need to pivot, but <laughs> we've spent too much money and we don't know how, and we're too big, we're too big to turn too quickly. Uh, and I think that they're, I think they're starting to barrel towards the people are tired of recycled, you know, recycled content. That's not to say that recycled games and like, you know, new iterations of games, whether like it's like the fourth, fifth or sixth version of a game can do well, um, or, or make or do well in sales. But the one thing that I will say is like, I think it's one of the biggest benefits to a game like the Final Fantasy series, right? Like Final Fantasy has stumbled for sure. I, right. Like, you know, I. I wouldn't it's been a long time since they've made a Final Fantasy that you know has the same kind of staying power like cultural staying power as like Final Fantasy 10 right uh though I take that to be honest with you I do really think that Final Fantasy um I do think that Final Fantasy 7 the Final Fantasy 7 remake series and Final Fantasy 14 though that's an MMO so not as many pl people will play that um, I do think that those do have that kind of cultural staying power because their narratives are so strong. Um, but with that said, the best part about Final Fantasy is that no Final Fantasy is like any other Final Fantasy. Every, every single one of them is a reinvention of what a Final Fantasy game is. And not a lot of other games do something similar to that. You know what I mean? Uh, a Spider-Man game is always going to be a Spider-Man game. Uh, Halo is always just going to be a Halo. Uh, and not a lot of games have that kind of flexibility in the way that Final Fantasy does. Where we've had action games, we've had, you know, strategy Final Fantasy, MMO Final Fantasy, we've had, um, uh, you know, mixed action turn-based. We have the ATB system for Final Fantasy VII uh, Remake and Rebirth. You have full turn-based systems. There's a lot of different directions that they can go with that series, and they do a really good job at being able to reinvigorate it by innovating upon what they've done in the past, and then also handing it off to a different to a different director or lead or team to be able to try to envision something different for the franchise and do something different, right? Like they did with Naoki Yoshida. They gave him Final Fantasy 16. He turned it into Devil May Cry. Some people like it. Some people hate it. But that's just something that you're going to have happen. The problem is that there's too many companies that are out there right now that are too worried to try to do anything that daring. Final Fantasy, like the, I don't think people give, X, or sorry, I don't think people give Square Enix as much credit as they deserve. What they did with Final Fantasy 16 was incredibly risky, but there's a ton of people that love it. Final Fantasy is how you do multiverses, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm very new to I'm very new to Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 16 is my is my first, and I love the story better than any movie that I've watched in the past few years. Yeah, and there's going to be a ton of people that Final like I actually think I brought that up in a video at one point where I'd said like you know while I understand that like some old school Final Fantasy people, myself included in a way, uh, you know they're not going to look at Final Fantasy 16 with the same kind of reverence that they have with other ones. However, keep in mind that Final Fantasy 16 is going to be some people's first Final Fantasy, and it's going to be their favorite. And I always think, personally for myself, I, I've always felt that everybody's first Final Fantasy ends up being their favorite one. Also, Goth, thank you for the uh, for the tier one. Three months in a row, holy smokes. The diehard turn-based fans get mad at 16. Yeah, they also disregard Final Fantasy 14 as well. They also hate Naoki Yoshida. Like genuinely. Like the heart like like the ones the people that don't play the MMO that really just like Final Fantasy 6, 7, and 9. Like those folks that are in there, you you'll have a bunch of those that are like, ew. Naoki Yoshida, he's he's the one that's ruining the Final Fantasy brand. That's what they think. As long as we can agree Final Fantasy 8 was the worst. Do you want to get banned? Uh, hey, Mr. Drops. 
Uh, or can I call you legendary? Uh, I think most people now call me leg drops. <laughs> uh, uh, what are your thoughts on NetEase? Oh no, doing an Overwatch clone of the Marvel Universe. Yeah, I was watching Asmongold stream before I started streaming and um, the game looks like shit. Legs, leggy D, leg drops, leg. Um, yeah, it looks like, it looks like, it looks like garbage. And also on top of that, at the exact same time, like what is, has Nettie's ever done anything good? Legolos? <laughs> That's my, my, uh, my, what is it? My Dragon Dogma 2's character's name is Legath. Legath drops. I was going to play, I was going to play a, uh, a ranger and call myself Legath Loss. But I didn't do it. Like a less. <laughs> DBZ Kakarot wasn't bad. Did they make that? I know DBZ. A lot of people really like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, actually. I haven't played it, though. Square Enix is a random. Uh, is such a strange company. They can randomly drop for Spoken and then invest in Web3. While releasing Final Fantasy VII Reaper and Remake. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I found a ladder. A ladder! <laughs> oh my god. What's up, Rory? Rory, I'm surprised you haven't been cancelled by the Dragon's Dogma 2 community yet. Uh, to be honest, Final Fantasy 9, 6, 4, 4, <laughs> like Roman, Roman numeral much, like, I think that's a 4, Final Fantasy 4 is the best Final Fantasy for me, yeah, Final Fantasy 4 is pretty good, <laughs> like, cockroach, you completely, uh, immune to the nuking, huh, yeah, um, Yeah, the discourse, the uh, the Dragon's Dogma discourse is uh, it's a it's a thing. I really do wish that we could get away from uh, I really do wish we could get away from a lot of the uh, a lot of like the weird dialogue that we've had recently. You know what I mean? Fourteen. Oh, and he does say XIV. Sorry, I skipped over the X. My bad. My bad. Final Fantasy 14. Final Fantasy 14 is my... It's my love. It's my love. I actually need to go back and do some Final Fantasy 14, to be honest with you. I need to get caught up before Dawn Trail gets released. Plus, on top of that, there's a really good reason to because I can get a Torgal mount right now. Or actually, or next month, sorry. I think April 2nd or something like that is when the Torgal mount comes out. <coughs> I haven't played Final Fantasy 14. Don't know if I will. It's a long haul, man. It's a long haul. There's a lot of people that are really upset. Um, there's a lot of people that are upset with Final Fantasy 14 Dawn Trail because it's going to give people the ability to basically skip to to Dawn Trail, so players don't have to go through the uh, Heidel and Zodiac uh, storylines. Personally, myself, they have to do something. Do you know what would be really cool and I wish that they would do? What if they just made an anime? Like, I'm trying to think, like, what would be the best thing for Final Fantasy fans? Or, like, for, like, a player getting into Final Fantasy? And personally, for me, I think it would be sick if they just did an anime for the entire, like, Heidel and Zodiac line. Basically, from a Realm Reborn up until uh, the uh, Endwalker. I think that would be really cool if they just had like an entire anime series for people to watch to be before they played the game. I guarantee that would pop off so hard. And on top of that, on top of that, you would have so like the players that want to know the lore can go watch that, and then the players that already love the game are gonna watch the shit out of it anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
But if the main character isn't a cat girl, then it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not canon. <laughs> Only if you photobolt, uh, you, uh, you photobolt me. Yeah, that'd be actually really nice, actually. Uh, le yeah, legendary drops. Uh, I was in the mood to buy a game today for my PC after having Helldivers 2 get, uh, really get me excited about playing more. Uh, I couldn't find anything that was worth it, so I bought Helldivers 1 on Steam because uh, a great deal for $7.99, so I bought it instead. Yeah, I bought it for... It was on sale for like 4 bucks. <coughs> so I, I told people about it in my last video. It said, it said the sale still had 44 hours left when I made my video, so it should still be up right now. We discussed that in the Discord, too. You can't expect people to play 600 hours of a story to do homework uh, before the current expansion. Uh, anime is a golden promotion. Yeah. And it's evergreen. They'll just continually make money off of it. Square Enix should hire me. If I see them make an anime for it, I'm going to call them and be like, hey, I think you owe me money. Somebody watch this. Koji Fox. Are you in my chat? Yeah, I think that's probably the best thing for them to do, to be honest. Like, because they have to do something. Because uh, you don't want to, you also don't want to just make it where players don't get to get that experience of A Realm Reborn through, uh, uh, through Endwalker. Because it's one of the greatest video game stories ever told. Genuinely, from my perspective, it's one of the best video game stories ever told. It's one of the best Final Fantasy stories ever told, if not the best. Uh, and it's not just because of the length. It's just, it is actually because of the length. That's one of the really difficult things when it comes to talking about that, because I also understand the perspective of the players that don't want people to not be able to skip, right? Because they, they want... <sighs> Even watching it in an anime, I don't think you'd really get the... the level of investment that's necessary from adventuring with those people, getting to know those characters on a personal level, losing some of them, gaining new ones, saving some, the redemption arcs, all of those different things, it really does, like the time investment does make all of that more impactful. Uh, hey, for me, it's one of the best stories I've ever exp experienced in form of media. Yeah, yeah, I I've said this, I've said this multiple times. I'm not a crier, okay? I'm not a crier. But just like after all of the events and everything that had happened in Heaven's, Heaven's Word, standing on the final steps of fate. Hits! A piano kicks in. Oh. Oh. Chills. Literal chills. Bullshit, you're crying all the time. Don't lie. Don't lie. Oh. Oh. And the words of the song, and then you finally realize that the song is actually the story of the expansion, and you're just like, My God, my God, it's so good. Absolutely fantastic. Just an like the, the most, the most goaded expansion, the most goaded expansion. I, I, I enjoyed all of them, but I don't, there's, oh God, it's just so damn good. It's just so good. So good. This is one of the reasons why like, I want to go back and I want to do um, uh, DSR. I never did DSR and I really want to do DSR at one point. Uh, love your videos, uh, by the way. Really excited to play about Helldivers 2 and I found your live stream. I'm happy your content is very concise and enjoyable. Thank you. Thank Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Came over the uh, came over here for the base quality of content and your editorial content on, on YouTube. 
Your reasoning why Helldivers 2 is the future is right on the money, in my opinion. Thank you, man. Thank you. Realize, realize that the only reason why I have these kind of takes is because I have taste, okay? So when I talk to you guys about things like this, when I show you stuff like this and say, this is the kind of stuff that you need to try out, the kind of experiences that you need to have, that's how you get to this position that I'm in right now. It's personal growth. It's personal growth. I said this in one of my Final Fantasy 14 videos where I kind of was like discussing my experience playing it. And there's very few games that I feel like you can get um, that you can actually get some level of like personal growth out of. And at least, and, and I think that varies um, person to person, right? And I think specifically when I look at a game like Final Fantasy 14, there it's a game that's filled like a, with a lot of like life lessons, like a ton of life lessons. Um, especially like, like around like friendship and relationships and, um, you know, all that kind of different stuff. Right. And, um, it, it's one of those things where like you, not every game has that kind of, can leave that kind of impression on people. I think that in a lot of cases there are those moments where we can come in to play a game and then kind of take something away from it for our like personal lives. You know what I mean? But uh, for me specifically, the game has just, uh, it, it had a lot of different moments that were really cathartic. A lot of moments that really kind of taught me, like uh, helped me deal with some stuff that I was going through at the time. This is like before streaming and stuff like that, before YouTube, at least when I was playing. What is this? Okay, sorry, I was supposed to make sure. Okay. Uh, Final Fantasy teaches you emotional maturity. Yeah, I think that's also true too. Actually, I I think that that's a uh, that's a relatively uh, relatively good good uh, good take to have. Actually, Final Fantasy fourteen was very cathartic. Coming from from WoW, like World of Warcraft just got generic after a long time. I'll be honest with you. Like they, they, it just got really commercialized and and very just like like mid, I don't know for me at least that and they just got away from the storytelling in general. Oh yeah yeah yeah, uh, Ultima yeah I've seen this before. Uh, I I saw I saw that Naoki Yoshida said it is maybe it's somebody some time for somebody new to work on Final Fantasy because they're talking about Final Fantasy 17. They think they they should have somebody completely different work on it rather than him or the guy that's working on the Seven Remake series. wow is mid plus well and see that's the funny thing unironically you can put raid leading experience uh on your job resume yeah for sure well wow trailers are what got me to buy world of warcraft the first time so it got me to buy world of warcraft the first time yeah yeah actually you know what the funny the funny thing is lj um the first video, the first video that Asmongold ever watched of mine, the first react he ever did for me was a, um, was my, like, what MMOs do to you? Like, basically, like, your brain on MMOs, kind of. It's one of my eldest videos. Uh, are you going to do live stream Dragon's Dogma 2? I did last week. I'm going to do some more this week. I'm just not doing it today. Today, I'm going to play some Helldivers. Maybe some Bellatro. Mostly because I want to spread the Bellatro fever. Name drop? What? It was just like one of uh, like that that video was like one of my first like most viewed videos that I ever had. Hell diving right now. There you go. Is 
Is that Sulquist? Are you Sulquist? Or Solness? No. Yes. Um, all right. I'll just have to find it later. Oh, okay. That's easy then. There we go. Easy, easy. Yeah, so uh not that any of you guys are um uh, are we gonna get free war bonds or just paid ones? I don't know, actually. That's a really good question. That's actually a really good question. I have no idea. Um, I would I would say chances are they probably will do a free war bond here or there, but I think for the most part, what they're probably going to do is keep them paid, because, um, as you're playing and continuing to play, you're just going to be getting the currency anyway. And plus, on top of that, they have to do something to urge you to buy, like a couple times. You know what I mean? Ten bucks a month is five dollars less than a MMO sub, so <laughs> I guess I don't know. Yeah, maybe the I, I would like to see them do like double war bonds sometime. You know what I mean? Where they have like a free one and then a, a paid one or something like that. And then the freed one, basically the free one will give you, you know, with the free one will have enough credits to give you half off on the next one or something. Maybe I don't know. I I haven't run into any currency issues yet though. Uh, uh, do you think that they'll keep all items in or rotate them out as they progress? Uh, no, the, the war bonds are not expiring. The war bonds are going to stay there permanently. That was one of the things that they wanted to make sure that they, uh, you know, that they kept up on there. Honestly, you can just earn enough in game to buy it. Uh, you can get it within like in a week. Hey, here's the thing. When it comes to when it comes to the war bonds specifically, and you're looking at the premium currencies, if you want to make it your personal mission to buy that war bond, if you just focused on that for an evening, you would get it. But they built the game in that way. They built the game in that way. If you want, if you if that's what you want, go get it. Just go get it. Simple as that. Paid for cutting edge war bond with found credits. Um, have already have enough for another one. That's exactly what I'm saying. So like. Yeah, it's just not it's just not necessary for people to uh not necessary for people to uh try to uh, they probably don't really I, that's why I actually they probably will never do a free one. I wouldn't see any reason why to. Wow taught me a life lesson about balance and personal life with my gaming back with back in the wrath days. I actually wholeheartedly feel this. I quit World of Warcraft because I um I got into a band and somebody like, uh, there was like one, we were supposed to have like band practice or something like that. I can't remember what it was, or I think we we're just going to hang out or something like that. And somebody was just like, what are you doing? And I'm like playing wow. And he's like, you're always playing wow. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, are you always going to be doing that instead of hanging out with us? And I think that was like one of the days where I finally was just like, yeah, you know what? This is taking up way too much time and I could be doing stuff, having way more fun. And then I went outside. <laughs> Wasn't a part of life to get sucked into WoW. At one point, it was like the fad. Everybody had to do it. Everybody had, you know, you you hadn't lived if you hadn't lost some of your life to Warcraft. And I'm happy to say that when I played the game, I played the game at its fucking peak. You know what I mean? Like, I played it when it was like the best thing to do. The coolest time ever to do it. Yeah. I played it for, I have like one long hair. What the fuck? Um, I played it for... Late vanilla into Burning Crusade into Wrath of the Lich King. And then I scooted. And then I came back because like, you know, the, uh, the, um, uh, the itch, the itch had grabbed me again. Right. And I was like, Hmm, you know, maybe I'll go back to World of Warcraft. 
and I got the best lesson possible when because when I tried to go back to World of Warcraft, it was Warlords of Draenor. So I like got back in and was like, nope. <laughs> I'm good. I'm nope. Nope. <laughs> Thank you for the follow over on Twitch. Uh, so I've got my kid watching Batman Beyond and Bruce Wayne in a padded room is a little shocking. I don't know, or at all remember this happening. Batman Beyond anime. Are you talking about the, the cartoon? God, the, the, the old Batman cartoons are sick, dude. I'd have him, I'd have him watching Big O instead, though. That's just personal. I've never really been a big DC guy or anything like that. I always felt like Big O was like my anime Batman. Take a look at a couple other things. I saw this as well. Naki Yoshida. He, he, he came up. He came up on stage. He's basically. So they, they basically announced they were going to put they were pushing back the release date for um for Final Fantasy 14. And they kind of guised it as well. Yeah, because we want everybody to be able to play the Elden Ring DLC. This is not not because I want to. I'll give you one week. <laughs> He's so real for that. Yeah. Yeah. See, the funny thing is, is that, um, like, it's not hard. You know, you know, one of the discussions we have, like, you have a lot of people that are like, you know, like, look how easy it is to get, look how easy it is to get hated. You know what I mean? It's really easy to get hated in the video game industry. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. It's not hard to get loved either because all you have to do is just be a gamer and think about the gamer first. But the problem is, is that I just don't think a lot of these CEOs, a lot of these companies are thinking about their uh, audience. They're not thinking about the customer. All they're doing is just thinking about how to, uh, how to take advantage of the customer, how to squeeze more from us, how to make more money. It's not about how to actually, you know, give us what we need. Cause if you start from that, if you start from that mindset of like, how can I give them what they need? Then you're going, I, I, Maybe I'm wrong, man. Maybe I'm wrong. I just feel like you can make more money in the end if that's the way that you go about things. Boeing. Good lord. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for this. I, I need to I need to get uh I need to get caught up in the story. <clears throat> get some other stuff taken care of and whatnot. But like one of the things that I will say is this. If you are, if you like MMOs or you've ever had any interest in playing Final Fantasy 14, this is probably going to be the best time ever to get into Final Fantasy 14. One, because you have the option to be able to skip through like, you know, the original story, which I personally wouldn't because it's really good, but I completely understand if people would because it's a like 400 hour investment or something crazy like that. There's a lot of game to play uh, before you get there, but they've done a lot to be able to kind of shorten it up in different areas. Um, but looking at all the changes and the things that they're going to be putting into Final Fantasy 14 for, for Dawn Trail, it's like, it's like they took all of the best things from every expansion and they're just shoving them all in to this expansion. Like all of the things that people loved the most or loved to, um, love to, you know, interact with the most, they just threw them all in this expansion, which is sick, especially cause I, they, they're already talking about that. They're making sure they're going to have like a, uh, um, like these massive, like massive areas for us to like explore and, 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 uh, and, and do content in kind of like Bosja or, um, what's the other one? Eureka, things like that. Cause they realize players really like having something like that. A outside of the regular grind grind for us to do stuff. That's like relatively skill-based. They want to make the game a little bit more challenging, which I think is going to be just thank you. Just thank you. Like the, the problem, like the, the babification of Final Fantasy 14 since I've started playing it has just been like out of control. Like 
there are things that take skill, but the problem is you have so many people that are so upset because, you know, they think that they're skilled at the game and now they're talking about how they want to raise the difficulty and they don't like hearing other people tell them that the game is too easy. What do you mean? I'm skilled at the game. You're saying it's easy? Like, nah, dude. Two different types of dies. Dude, double die. I don't think you guys realize what, what level this takes to the game. Give me Viper now. Vi I'm also looking forward to Viper. I think Viper looks sick as shit. Painter. Or Pictomancer. Like, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I main a Summoner. So, Summoner and summoner and Sage. I was, like, I used to be an Astrologian main, but I didn't really like what they did. I I, I want to go and take a look at this at one point. So, this is, uh, this is the Akira Toriyama. Rest in peace. Um, game that they had made uh, called Sandland. IGN had gave it a 9. So I kind of want to check that out at one point in time. I forgot about this. I saw stuff for it before and I, I you know, it just kind of fell off the radar, but I kind of want to check this out. Uh, I got butthurt when the meta shift, when the meta shifted to healers DPS in 2. I actually, I don't mind healer DPSing, to be honest. Like, it kind of keeps me in the rhythm when I'm healing. I actually don't, I actually don't mind that. Um, but the problem is, is that slowly but surely, it's become more about that and less about the healing, which kind of sucks. Because you're like 90% of the time casting, uh, casting attack spells rather than, uh, um, you know, rather than like healing and stuff like that. But you also don't want to make everything a heal check either. You know what I mean? I just wish that there was more like supportive abilities, if that makes any sense. Oh, I also saw this. Uh, PC Gamer did an article talking about Lazelle's voice actor in Baldur's Gate 3 is definitely as good, if not miles better than any film or TV show uh, I've done. Um, I'll be honest with you. I actually think that we're getting to a point now where video games are starting to. Uh, I don't think they're starting to. I think they already have. I think that video games have exceeded other forms of like media and entertainment. For me, at least like, I, don't get me wrong. I like watching a good movie, but I like playing a good one instead. Maybe it's maybe it's like the uh, inherent narcissism in all of us. You know what I mean? <laughs> I want it to be about me. <laughs> I want it to be about me. Video games are definitely one of the best uh, forms of media in telling a story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, Baldur's Gate 3 was just a phenom. I hardly feel compelled to watch TV or movies. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe only short of books. Yeah, I think books are still good. But I just mean like uh, like popular media, I guess, today. So, you know, specifically uh, in the same kind of way that I think YouTube has taken over for written media. Um, video games are going to start taking over for like TV and TV and movies. I think you're going to probably also in the future probably see more interactive TV and movies. Well, of course, the general populace is watching more TV and movies for now. But sensibility shift over time you need to do a final fantasy 14 stream as Dra dragoon for floor tank i'm good at dragoon decent it's one of my level 90 jobs i think it was my first level 90 job if i'm not mistaken i think i leveled as no i can't remember what i did it was probably summoner uh what is this precisely this uh, i just found that you could use a catapult in dragon's dogma 2 uh, new parts on the, um, to unlock new parts of the map on Dragon's Dogma 2. I haven't even seen this. I wonder where this is at. So there's like a wall that you can break down that'll unlock another path. It looks like it goes to a cave. Uh, prefacing this, I am not saying other open world games like Horizon or Witcher are bad or worse. I enjoy them for a lot of different reasons. This is what I like about old open world games like Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, and Elder Scrolls that have interactive worlds. Things like this are visual only. Most open world games are okay. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 take us to another level IMO. Um, I don't think it's just, uh, I don't think it's just, I don't, I don't remember Elder Scrolls having stuff like this. 
I think that people just like want to drop Elder Scrolls because they just want to like hit the nostalgia point more than anything else. Like, and I'm not trying to like be a revisionist and say that like Elder Scrolls hasn't had a wide impact on the gaming industry or how like RPGs are made. But I think that for the most part, that like people also kind of romanticize Elder Scrolls games far more than they probably should as well. You know what I mean? Um, like, it's not like they're bad games or anything like that, but I think that people, like, overblow it too much. <clears throat> if anything, I would have said, this is why I would have liked Dragon's Dogma 2 or Elden Ring, because Elden Ring has a bunch of stuff like this, right? Elden Ring has a ton, like, I'm sorry, but Elden Ring probably has the best open world design out of any game that I've ever played, ever. And not to say that Dragon's Dogma 2 isn't good, but Elden Rings was just on a completely different level. And that's not even like being like a, a nostalgia chaser or fucking, you know, it just, it just is what it is. It just is what it is. I mean, holy. The, the, the amount of ways that they could interconnect different areas. Actually, I'd probably even go further than that and say probably Dark Souls 3 had really, like, had probably some of the best level design ever. <clears throat> the amount of like interconnected areas, how certain doors and certain pathways would open up after doing certain things and connect places that you didn't think were connected in the first place. Um, yeah, hopping into a coffin in Elden Ring and being transported to a completely different area. You, you know what I mean? Like crazy stuff, dude. Crazy world building and uh, um, exploration stuff that you, you just haven't seen in a lot of other games. Baldur's Gate 3 did it in a lot of ways as well. Yeah, you got a really good point. You got a really good point now that I think about that. Uh, especially if you look at a place like uh, Act 1 with the... Uh, with like the Underdark. Because there's like multiple ways to get to the Underdark. Uh, multiple ways to be able to get into Act 2. There's only one way to get into... Uh, um, you've clearly not explored all the planets in Starfield. And I never will. Starfield got 20 hours of my time, and that is all it's ever getting. Freedom's greetings. I'm your host, Coretta Kelly. Helldivers continue efforts to eradicate the automaton threat in Operation Swift Disassembly. The Minister of Defense has indicated that the operation's goal is the total destruction of all automatons. Saying, oh, easy. Peace is not an option. Easy. The automatons are programmed for two things, violence and hating freedom. Based. True and real. True and real. Coming up next, are toilet stalls dissident hideouts? <laughs> Coming up next are toilet stalls dissident hideouts. More on that when we return. I can't fucking can't. I can't. I can't. That's too funny, man. I'm meeting this stall. We're gonna talk about bug rights. Oh my god. Yeah, I also saw somebody on Reddit that made the posts. They're like, uh, people don't like it's straw man news. Straw man news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is too funny. Yeah, it's too funny. Oh, man. All right. Let's talk about some more bullshit now. Uh, so I saw this. Uh, uh, Susie. Susie had said, Dragon's Dogma 2 microtransaction sucks. Its performance is currently not good. Its game design is not either of those things. It blows my mind that uh, I played for countless hours. Seeing people spew incorrect information so proudly about uh, how, the game, how the game works, it's a little disturbing. Uh, and um, yeah, so one of the things that I'm seeing a lot of people do now is because they like the game, they try to immediately discredit and um like push aside those that have genuine criticisms and say well why aren't you instead talking about why the game is great and it's like well we can do both at the exact same time we don't have to say the game is great so you shouldn't be talking about those things 
you should be able to say that the game is great, but the game also has these things that it shouldn't have. It also has these issues that shouldn't be there. And the game would be much better if it didn't. And likely the game also would be selling better as well. I'm really interested to see... Um, I'm really interested to see the Steam charts after... Um, Like, I feel like this is, like, even though, like, the game's doing well, I feel like this peak is really low for what, uh, for what kind of dry, for what kind of game it should be. Because if we look at something like Elden Ring, which, I mean, obviously it's a fucking insane game, right? But I would say it should have at least been half of this. The uh yes, the peak is oddly low. That's what I'm saying. It should be like 500 k ish. But I do think that the general sentiment and then also and also the rating is preventing them from getting the sales that they otherwise would have had on Steam. And you have people that are mad that the game isn't selling. There are, you have people that are mad that the game isn't being touted as the best game of all time right now. And it, it, they're fans of the game. They want the game to be recognized for how good it is. And I can understand wanting the great game to be. I want the game to be recognized for how good it is. I do. Capcom didn't. I don't understand how people can't put, put those two things together. I would love for Dragon's Dogma 2 to be recognized as one of the greatest RPGs, sit alongside Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3, you know, as some of the best RPGs that we've had come out in the last 10 years. I would love to, for it to be recognized for being that game because largely it does have the potential to be that game because it's all there for the most part. However... The game plays like shit and it's, uh, you know, and it, and it has unnecessary microtransactions. It doesn't have an, it doesn't have the ability to make an extra save or to, to save or reload your game or, or to restart your game on, on PC. That's not the customer's fault. That's, that's Capcom. Capcom had every chance here to push the game back another week or so, whatever they needed to do to be able to optimize the game fully so the game ran better on PC. They had the opportunity to not put microtransactions into the game at all. And they had the opportunity to uh, uh, to make sure that the game had the ability to make people have an extra save. It has nothing to do with the players. And I've seen a lot of people blaming the players for, le for, for leaving reviews like this. And it has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with, everything to do with Capcom. And it's just like really weird because the thing is, is that like some of the conversations that I've seen pop up about all this stuff, it's just, it's just really disheartening to see consumers band together to defend a, defend a, you know, massive corporation. Like, I'm like, do you work for Capcom? Like, oh, wait, well, why didn't you bitch about it in this game? And why didn't this? And it's not even that bad. And you can get all the stuff in game and people are, people are blowing it out of proportion, which yes, people are definitely, you know, have like stupid. The problem is, is that somebody like me can say, you can earn all the stuff in game. You don't need to buy the microtransactions, but those microtransactions shouldn't be there. I can say that. And then somebody with less sense will take what I say and then go on Twitter and say, these are pay to win microtransactions. And it's just like, ah, oh, well, what are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing <laughs> like they they just want to grab it and take it to an absolute ex like an absolute extreme you know what i mean and i also know like uh and here's the other thing too people don't really think about this either that a lot of the a lot of this right here what like missing context people aren't really putting into this is that uh the game doesn't have regional pricing so there's some people that are buying dragon's dogma 2 and for them it's like a hundred dollars or more like it far exceeds like what they would normally budget for a game. And then it releases in the state it does and it has microtransactions. It doesn't have an extra save slot. So then obviously people are going to be not happy. People aren't going to be happy. Ellie, thank you for the gifted sub. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. 95 Canadian up in here. Bam, there you go. You want to know you want to know why people are upset because they're looking at, because the problem is is that you have this weird dissonance where like I'll be honest, like people don't have fucking empathy. Like, the internet doesn't have empathy. Simple as that. Everybody's a fucking narcissist. They see it, the game's $70 for me. 
So when I say, you know, it's a $70 premium title, well, it's actually a $95 title for, for Canadians. It's a even probably even more expensive for, uh, for Aussies, right? For my Australian folks, I know it's expensive. So it's just, you know, take a minute to think about it. People in purple country, uh, why did I say purple countries? <laughs> Sorry, my, uh. Uh, for many people in countries, it's one third or more than half of their monthly income. I even counted that in Discord. That's crazy. That's crazy. Even $70 is high in USD. Of course it's high in USD. It's a lot of money, man. That's and that's the whole point. Like, that's why, like, like, you know, I, like I get I get where people are coming from. I understand what you're trying to say. I understand that you like the game and the game is good. I also like the game and the game is good, but the game is also fucking expensive and it shouldn't be released in the way that it was. And I stand by it that none of this discourse should probably be happening if it wasn't for the fact that the game didn't run well. If the game ran like a beast out of the box, everybody would be like, Psh, this is the good stuff. It was about one third of my monthly income. That's, that's crazy. In my country, it's 20% of minimum wage. Jesus Christ. That's crazy. So of course people are gonna be upset, but that's the problem. Like people just don't have that level of context. People don't wanna have that kind of empathy towards other people and realize that $70 may not be a lot to them, but the, the higher the stakes are, the more the investment becomes, the the brighter the negatives are when you're looking at something and, you know, balancing whether or not and making the judgment call to make a purchase. And even more so how burnt you feel when you buy something and it doesn't live up to your expectations. Baldur's Gate 3 and Helldivers 2 have raised the bar. They fucking lifted it into outer space for so many... Or, They've lifted the bar into outer space for companies that should be able to reach it without any fucking effort at all. We're talking about company like and the thing is is that they're like, "Oh, well, you don't you don't <sighs> you don't <laughs> legendary drops. Why didn't you bitch about the state of the game in Helldivers 2? You applauded it and told people that they should be understanding." Arrowhead Studios has a hundred, a hundred employees. Capcom has 3,500. They have studios all over the world. They have 45 years in the industry. They've made more games than most studios have. Mark with another five gifted subs. What's wrong with you? Stop giving me money. I appreciate it. Super unnecessary, but thank you. <laughs> also, make sure you thank Mark. But it's like, that's the thing that just... It just... <sighs> explodes my mind. I just don't understand it. I just don't get it, man. I Like, how can people not see this or think about this for even a second and just say... You know... Uh, I did get the game, but it's wild to me how, uh, how gorgeous Helldivers is and how well it runs on my rig. The FPS drop in town is so trash and jarring. That's the whole thing. That was like my point when I was making it. It's more like a pseudo pseudo, like, Hey, I've played the game for like 20 hours and, uh, th these are my thoughts on some stuff. Right. Um, and, you know, part of that whole discussion was I love the game when I'm out in the open world, which luckily that's where the gameplay is, except for the fact that there are there are chains and chains of quests, chains of quests within the cities and keep you in the city for a long time. And all I want to do is get out. All I want to do is just get out of the city. I don't want to be here. Let me out. Let me out because I'm sick of my game looking like this. I'm sick of my game playing like this. Sick of my screen stuttering and... Uh, ugh, ugh. Why you give attention to the people engaging engagement farming for a living? Not really worth uh, these folks giving these folks attention. Well, it's not just them that are doing it. There's plenty of other people that are having these discussions. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I did like one of Ruri's posts. 
He says, holy shit, I'm not even a, I'm not even that much of a Final Fantasy VII con connoisseur, but I thought Barrett was a pretty cool character uh, from what I experienced of him. Uh, boiling, uh, boiling all that to comic relief is, yeah, a, certainly a take. This is definitely engagement farming. But Dual Shockers have been around for a really long time, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they, they're, they've been a, uh, like a, a relatively pop, uh, or popular, uh, uh, magazine for PlayStation, I think specifically for, uh, for a long time. But this is one of the dumbest takes that I've seen. And like, this is the thing. I really think that it, it, this is part of a larger topic in general, but when I look at something like this, I wonder one, did you even play the game? Did you play the game? Well, because what they're trying to do, they're race baiting with this. It's past time that the Final Fantasy VII Final Fantasy series gave us a black party member who isn't a laughing stock. This is such bullshit. Barrett is a great father, a doting father to an adopted daughter. He's what he's a uh, uh, what is he? He's the leader of a uh, a splinter cell of an activist group that's trying to save the planet. He's largely the party's guiding light when it comes to any ma any matters of morality. I, you have the entire part with um, what is what is it? What is one character's name? Um, Dine. You have that whole section with Dine. He's a great, uh, uh, just a great character in general. He's just a good person as a character. Like, oh, are you trying to say that like you you just what didn't like the part where he put on a sailor suit and he liked the way he looked in a sailor suit? Like, what are you talking about with this? This stuff just drives me crazy. And I realize that, I realize that, uh, you know, these sites, print media is dying. And the reason print media is dying is because they are so like just creatively robbed and they're unskilled at their jobs. They don't know how to write. They don't know how to have an original opinion if it could save their fucking life. All they do is suck and vampire off of all of these different movements that are out there because they themselves can't critically think. They can't come up with their own beliefs. They can't do anything. All they do is just try to belong somewhere. And what they do is they just co-opt the opinions of some of these other people, which is the reason why they have spokespersons in the first place, right? And by the way, this is left or right or in the middle or to the side or on the ceiling or whatever you want to say it is. All of these different kind of opinions and all these different kinds of movements all have spokespeople because other sheep need someone to follow. And that's what these kind of people are. They're fucking sheep. They're sheep. And it's disgusting. It's so sad that they propagate this kind of discussion over something that is so, so not true. People try to call Final Fantasy 16 racist, and I don't get it. Yeah, same thing. Same thing with that because it was a game that was based in a, a, a European time, you know, European themed kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Divisive topics bring views. Unfortunately, uh, it it brings clicks for them, but the problem is it doesn't actually bring people to be invested in them or their content to begin with. And that's one of the that's one of the reasons why. Um. So I actually think that this whole thing that's going on right now with Kotaku and like game video games in general gamergate 2 all that kind of stuff like all of that i think does have something to do with a bigger shift in consumer interests more than anything else i think that companies like dual shock like kotaku like some of these other ones that are doing the gamer stuff like that they do a lot of these like click baity uh, race baiting and stuff like that because they just want to get clicks because they're trying to drive ad revenue and they're trying to be, you know, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, they they want internet updates and things like that. They're trying to remain relevant in some way, shape, or form. But the problem is, is that that doesn't actually build a loyal following, nor does that build any type of valuable brand. And I think that in a lot of cases, you're also going to have advertisers that are going to steer away from this kind of stuff because they realize that there's not enough money in it. Back when Phil Spencer was talking about how they're seeing that 
there's a, 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 a concerning lack of growth in the industry. Well, what that is, is that there's a lot of players that are out there that don't want to get preached to, and they recognize that a lot of the inclusion that's being included in games today is not genuine inclusion, it's pandering. And it's doing so just to try to make a buck, rather than doing it creatively, rather than making deep characters, making characters that actually matter to a story. They're just copy and pasting people in because they think that that's the way for them to be able to earn some sort of recognition in some way, shape or form, rather than actually being good writers. They're focused on doing other things. And this is something that I brought up before. Unskilled people are stupid. And those unskilled people that are stupid are the ones that are following movements and things like this because they can't have an original thought of their own. Notice that all of the companies that have games that are championed, they have all kinds of different beliefs. They, you know, they are down with diversity and all that, everything in between. But at the exact same time, they're still putting out incredible games because they know exactly how to do it in the first place. You know what I mean? It's more about the game first and then everything else just comes in naturally. It's relatively easy for us to walk outside and make friends with just about anybody if we wanted to. You know what I mean? So trying to pretend like they need to inject uh, education into our games is just... It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Yeah, and, I and I'm guaranteeing 178 likes, 2.2 comments. Fully ratioed by the comment section. Barrett is one of the best written characters in the game. What the fuck is this nonsense? Uh, in other words, you didn't play Rebirth. And do you know what? That's the other thing. That's the other thing that I have to say as well. That I don't really realize that, or I don't think a lot of people are thinking about either. Which is that, um... I don't think that these people are playing games. Like, genuinely, I don't think that they're actually hiring gamers. Because a lot of the opinions that they pull off of these games are opinions that come from people that... They're coming from opinions of people that aren't playing these games. And then even more so at the exact same time, the thing is, is that it kind of goes to show that like when Kotaku freaks out over the fact that they have to write game guides now, I'm like, I'm like, you guys just mad that you have to actually play a game? They're just activists. Yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said unskilled. I should have said unqualified. Ultima. That's probably a better way to say it. You have unqualified people that are working in jobs that they shouldn't be working in because they're not qualified to do that job. And then as a result, what ends up happening is to stay relevant and to be able to retain that job, they look to other people who are skilled and try to co-op whatever their ideals or ideas are into the work that they're doing. And then, you know, and then that's where you're seeing a lot of this like copying, pasting stuff that's going on in the industry happening a lot. That's the reason why the industry has been so stagnant for me over the last few years is because so many different companies are recycling the same IPs because they are literally filled with a bunch of people that are underqualified to do the jobs that they have. And you have all of these, you have all of these, uh, uh, all the people that had the original ideas that made a lot of these bigger companies great aren't there anymore. And the people that are under them aren't skilled enough to do or have the, the originality to be able to do that kind of stuff. Creativity that's necessary to be able to make a, an original IP that's worth playing. Do you see this with Reddit karma, karma farming? Uh, just a different industry and scale. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, take five minutes to go look at Gaming Circle Jerk, right? You want to talk about a subreddit that needs to get banned? That place is a fucking cesspool. Hail Arisen. Which vocation has your favor? So I played, um, I played as Archer. Didn't really like it that much. Didn't really like it. It's really boring. I don't know why. Maybe a magic archer is probably a hell of a lot better. But yeah, base archer. I don't know, man. Like I, I, I'm, I only have, um, uh, I only have, I think, two more vocation levels before it's maxed. And I'm gonna be so happy when I'm done. I'm gonna be so happy when I'm done with it because I'm just, I'm just tired of using it. Um, I've already maxed fighter and warrior. Now I'm doing archer, and then I will do rogue. Who's your go-to in DD2? <laughs> Warrior, are you kidding me? Oh my God. 
the amount of damage you do is disgusting. And you get so many of those like Dragon's Dogma 2 moments where you just absolutely just dunk on monsters all the time. Warrior is busted. It's so strong. It takes some skill to use though, because like you can get yourself screwed. You really need to know your timings. You need to, you know, um, uh, you really need to know your placement, try to hit weak spots and stuff. But war when, when I go back to playing Warrior after I level some of these other classes, especially after getting, uh, I'm looking for, I want to get Archer's ability to be able to do more damage to vital points, which means that I'm going to be able to like crit harder when I, when I like hit an enemy in the head and stuff like that. So I'm going to be able to do some like really, really strong stuff. Uh, yeah, I saw someone refer to Warrior as a rhythm class. It is a rhythm class. And once you nail, once you nail the rhythm, you're, you're doing pretty good. Um, you also just have to like place your shots sometimes. Sometimes I have to wait for my other party members to actually not really. I think that's probably, like the reason why I really like warrior so much is because uh, it, it's knocked down is just insane. You, there's so many opportunities that you have to knock people down. Uh, yeah, I'm exiting all, all vocations right now. Regular uh, regular archer was uh, was the most difficult for me. It was just the most difficult for me because it was boring. It's boring. It's easy to it's easy to play. I just ran around outside of Batal, just like ran the roads outside of Batal and just fall. Like, I also realized too, I don't know if you guys have picked this up, but you level vocations faster falling, fighting small enemies, not larger enemies. Like discipline does not scale as well as I think it would by fighting like some of the mini boss stuff, like fighting, fighting like ogres or golems or even dragons. Honestly, like I killed a dragon and I was like, bro, I, with the amount of time it took me to kill a dragon, I could have killed like 15 monster packs. And it would have had like five times the amount of discipline. How are you getting, how are y'all getting pawn to hold aggro? Uh, you need to have your pawn uh, level fighter first. Have your pawn level fighter and you can get the ability to get um, a uh, an augment that makes it where pawns will attack them more often. And then you also level. It's either rogue or archer that allows you to be able to get the augment to be able to make it where you're targeted less. So if you get that on yourself and then you get the other one on that, and then it's going to focus most of the aggro towards the pawn instead of you. Hmm. You know, I just read uh, Milo. On top of that, they're being exploited and burned out. Yeah. So uh, I, I I need to word this. The problem is you have to be kind of cautious with, with the things that you say, because the problem is, is that like, you know, with the way that I worded it, it, it sounds like I'm putting the uh, I'm putting the onus on the developers. I don't actually think it's like developers and video games. Uh, and I, we, we, do, we do know it's the writers for sure, you know, for the for the like video game media that are fucking up more than anything. But a lot of this really just comes down to management. It's leadership more than anything. The industry lacks leaders. The industry lacks good leadership. That's really all this comes down to. If you look, I said this before, instead of following studios, instead of following publishers, instead follow directors. Look at the directors of your favorite games follow those directors and nine times out of 10, those guys still make good games every single time. I love Naoki Yoshida. I love Final Fantasy 14. I liked Final Fantasy 16. Um, uh, the director for Final Fantasy 7, uh, for Final Fantasy 7 uh, uh, Remake and Rebirth. I follow, I, I follow, what, what did he make before Remake and Rebirth? I can't remember. But I followed him with other games that he's played. His games have been good. Um, Sven Vinka, obviously. Even though he's not really a director, he's the owner of the company, but he, he takes a director position as well. Dead Space director, yeah. Yeah, if you follow leadership, usually good games follow. Usually, not always. I thought that was the case with, uh, I thought that was the case with, um, Rod Ferguson, but I, I don't really think that's the way. 
there are some situations where some of those guys are going to walk into an incredibly talented team that already have a great idea and they're they're not really all that necessary you know what i mean You're going to vanish for a bit. All right. Chill. I don't really agree with everything this guy says, but I just saw this and I just wanted to see what it was. It says Gamergate 2 just got real, just got real, too real. BBC are now calling for a final purge if you oppose Sweet Baby Inc. In the view of BBC present uh, gaming presenter Jules Hardy, uh, the best way for the current discourse surrounding Sweet Baby Inc. to resolve itself would be with a final purge of those players who are critical of the general presence of diversity, equity, and inclusion focused con consultation companies within the video game industry. What does that mean? Final purge. <laughs> like, that's like, why is it that, why is it that with this, the, these kind of people that are so invested in this kind of stuff that the discourse goes so hard, so hard to the extreme? Because like, because like, uh, Because they feel like they feel like sweet they feel like sweet baby inks being attacked. No, you're not being attacked. Players just want to know what games you're working on because they think your writing sucks. They think your writing sucks. That's what this comes down to. And of course, you're gonna have some you're gonna have some people that are gonna be you know sitting in this section of like what, not wanting DEI and you know DEI in general in their games. But the thing is, like DEI is in every fucking game. There's some level of inclusion, equity, or diversity in, in just about everything in life, right? And I don't think on an individual basis, nobody has a problem with diversity. Nobody has a problem with equity. Nobody has a problem with, with inclusion. You do have the people that are like out on the outliers that are out there, the, you know, you know, wild folk, right? That have some crazy, crazy opinions, but nobody actually has a problem with these things. They have a problem when these things are done bad. And the thing is, is that, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like, I mean, players don't like SBI because of the fact that they're bad writers. They have made, they, from the views of the people that have played and consumed those games that they have made, they think that they're not very good and they don't want to play the games that that company's working on. And it's completely fine for the customer to know what comp what games those company that company's working on, track those games so that other players can be aware that, oh, hey, by the way, they had a hand in writing for this game. So if you didn't like the writing in the past, you're probably not going to like the writing now. So, you know, there you go. And you know what the funny thing is, is like, I even see, like, I was like, um, uh, where is it at? Where is it at? Uh, it's a majority of gamers that oppose a bad woke writing. Uh, not just, a, no, not just a majority. So here's the other thing too. It's actually, you know, what the funny thing is, is that bad writing exists on all sides, upside down in, under the ground and uh, on the ceiling, left, right, and in between baby. There's bad writers all over the place. And it really doesn't have anything to do. It has nothing to do with this. And it has everything to do with this. It's not the DEI. It's the consultation. They're shitty consultants. <laughs> their work, their their work isn't good. That's what the problem is. Their work isn't good. You could have another consultation company that doesn't do this, and they're just there to help. They're they're just there to help write. Or how about this? You have companies that you have companies that uh, other companies use to port games all the time, and they suck. And when and when players see that that's the company that's porting that game, they don't want to buy it because they know that that company doesn't do a good job of porting a game. This is no different than that. In my in my perspective, this is no different.
Uh, what does it say? Uh, Hardy, perhaps best known for best known to viewers of the government funded British program programming network for having served uh, as the host of 2021's Top Gear show. Okay, so yeah. Um, shared her opinion on the aforementioned debate on March 22nd in response to a tweet uh, from the narrative consultant company Black Girl Gamers. Uh, uh, retweeting a now deleted post from whoever that is uh, in which they proceeded uh, in which they proposed the creation of a steam page similar to sweet baby Inc. De detected uh, meant to inform customers of the game which black girl gamers had worked on uh, black girl gamers uh, you wanted to defend sweet baby Inc. Uh, with all you po um, with all you could possible uh, wrote the user well, here's a page because you wanted to finish Sweet Baby Inc. When I know that you were both working together on projects and Force DEI uh, is nothing more than racism. Uh, Black Girl Gamer mocked, uh, we really got you pressed just by existing. We've never worked with Sweet Baby Inc. All you saw was black and consulting and decided to and decided uh, we worked together. Then accused. Then then they then accused. Uh, sounds like racism. We're not we're not stopping. So have fun. Oh, really? Okay. Taking notice of Black Girl Gamers' attempt at a public clapback, Hardy would eventually retweet the company the company's post and ask her followers, "Could we agree for a round two of this?" They're talking about GG, GG2, baby. Hashtag GG2. Um, it, it can be the final purge. It can be the final purge of these gamers. Like, how do you think that you're going to purge people's opinions without erasing them entirely, right? Like, you're not going to, like, what, what is this nonsense? What do these people believe? What do they think? What do they, what do you think? You, what are you talking about? Your games aren't the games that sold last year. Your games aren't the games that are doing well. Yeah, they're living on another planet. It's 20, it's 2024. Uh, I've been arguing this for decades to have the last full detox of these of these dudes so we can get back to a positive gaming community we have been creating. What? <laughs> what do you mean detox? What are you going to do? You can't do anything. They're consumers. Wait, like what world do you guys live in? What world do you live in? Can we agree to a round two of this? Give me the final purge of these gamers. What does that even mean? Uh, <laughs> as an aside, it would be noted that there was a, uh, that they currently exist. No public record of black girl gamers. Sweet baby Inc. can work side by side on a given project as noted by at Becky. Okay. Uh, the former has stood in defense of the latter amidst recent backlash. Asked about uh, asked by a supporter on March 6th um, to refrain from engaging with YouTuber the Act Man's very late discovery regarding SBI, actually reach and operations or actual reach and operations. The company the company's official accountant account asserted, honestly, we've been doing this for years and trolls always come, but. Uh, but for us, it's not necessarily about feeding them. It's about showing them, showing an opposing narrative because sometimes non-endemic companies slash agencies will go online, see one perspective, theirs, and take it as gospel. Um, it's also in defense of SBI who work in a similar lane with us and do great work. Uh, they added, it's nice to see the solidarity when being attacked online also shows our audience who 
block two. Oh, 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 okay. That's how they wrote it. What is this? Is So I started looking at this SBI stuff and I cannot fathom why game studios would hire a narrative consultant group. Isn't that what you have lead writers for? Why Why not just hire a better writing team in-house? Lamau. Oh, oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just like retweeted it or whatever. I don't know, man. I don't know. This shit's fucking stupid. These people are stupid. I mean, she looks like the kind of psychopath that would say that kind of shit to begin with. These people are so detached from reality. The final purge of these players. The, the people are still there. The, I mean, the, the, the last the last time this kind of drama went through, nothing changed. You know what I mean? What are you talking about? Nothing changed. You didn't get rid of people. Those people are still there. They're still mad. They're still upset. They still have a problem. They still have a problem. And back then, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, like the, the big the big issue like last time around, wasn't it just like um like obviously there was like some DEI stuff that was in there, but for the most part, wasn't it like gaming journalism and gaming journalists not accurately depicting video games and rating them properly because they were um incentivized not to because of personal relationships and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Dev sleeping with a few journos. Yeah, exactly. So like that, and that's what that's one of that's one of the things too. Like yeah, like like customers just want transparency, dude. Customers just want transparency. It has nothing to do with purging people. Like, bro, you know what? You want to know the reasons? You want to know the reason why these people have these kind of these kind of um, it's kind of take. It's specifically because of the only people that they ever have discourse with are the people on the extremes, which is them and then the people that are the exact opposite of them and it just so happens that those parties are the loudest rather than the people that are in the middle that are the most sensible that you know discuss things within context and look at things from a level-headed perspective of you know obviously i feel like a lot of this stuff is kind of being co-opted by people's by by movements more than anything else rather than it just being something as simple as uh, you know sbi are bad writers and we just don't like what they do to video games it really doesn't have anything to do with like any social movement or anything like that for me. I have no problem with DEI. I have no problem with any of that stuff. I don't, uh, I'm not, um, I'm not into some, you know, I, I'm not in the, uh, in my tinfoil hat about black rock and ESG and, and all, I, I'm just not in that stuff, dude. I, I just look at it and go, they make a shitty product. I don't want to buy that product. That's it. That's as far as it goes. Cause I don't think it needs to go any further than that. But the problem is, is that people really want to get caught up in the fine details. And what ends up happening is, is that when they start trying to connect these lines of different stuff, well, the next thing you know, you start fight, you start finding yourself, you know, uh, being on the hardcore opposition side rather than the people that can talk sensibly about it. And that's what leads to more people like this having takes like this, if that this makes any sense. I would pay to see you or Asmin having a conversation on stream about this. Yeah. BlackRock funds all these consultants and gives these companies uh, that use them. Well, here's the thing. Y you can say whatever you want. Like, we can say whatever we want about BlackRock or whatever else. And at the end of the day, whatever BlackRock money is being shoved out there for, you know, grants or whatever for people to use these kinds of people's services, it doesn't matter. Because if it's not a return on investment, investors are not going to want to invest in it. Simple as that. So if these games are not selling well and the industry isn't growing, as Phil Spencer had said, then these people are not going to be making games like this anymore, or at least not using these kind of consultant agencies or, or, or people like that because they're making an inferior product that's not selling well on the market and sales are what they care about more than anything else. They don't care about any of this other noise. They don't care about any of these social movements. They care about your money. And if your money is not in this kind of stuff, then they're just not going to make it. Case in point with the games that have sold the best over the last few years. Even more so if you look at last year and you see that Hogwarts Legacy was one of the highest selling games of the year. And that was like, oh, we must boycott it. We need to stay away from it because, because I don't agree with the politics of the person who wrote the book that has nothing to do with the video game. 
because she's going to get money as a result of the video game doing well. Money will decide. Consumers decide. Wallets decide. Doesn't matter. Like, regardless of any of this, any, any of this discourse, any of this bullshit, at the end of the day, if these games aren't selling and they're not well made, there you go. But the problem is, is that video, is that a lot of games, especially when it comes to, um, the problem is with a lot of games lately is that, you know, gamers are like looking for reasons why, like, why are these games not doing well? Because they want to know they're trying to figure it out and they're, they're tracing threads to try to figure out, you know, what, uh, you know, what is the cause of certain games that are out there, not reaching their expectations or falling underneath their expectations. And really a lot of it just, it just comes down to fucking poor management decisions. Money's not being spent the way that it should be spent. It's not being invested in the way that it should be. Um, a lot of it has to do with like poor writing and stuff like that more than anything else. There's just a lot of like really dumb boneheaded mistakes that a lot of these companies are making. And yeah, that's it. It's as far as it goes. Uh, what else? Let's see if there's anything else on here that I wanted to talk about today. Dude, I'm so happy. The other day, I was having like like over the la over like last weekend and stuff. I was having I was having a real hard time. I was having a real hard time with uh like riders block. I didn't really know what to make videos about for this week. And then um and then luckily like a like a like a ray of sunshine from heaven. Uh Nakey Jake made a video and he's probably like one of my biggest uh um, he's probably like one of my biggest, um, inspirations when it comes to, uh, uh, like YouTube and like content creation and stuff. What's up? Why? Oh, here, I'll play a clip for you guys. So I was playing, I was playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and I was using the rope bridge. Which, by the way, the rope bridge kind of sucks in general for traveling. Like, it's completely useless. Um, but yeah, so you guys can see this. Yeah. Just scrolling. Cool. Yeah. Is that a griffin? Yes, it's a griffin. Yeah. You can't even see it, but he has like a such he's he has such a troll face on himself too. Just like Come on, man. How did I deserve this? So I've been trying to discern this. Johan Peelstead, the uh, CEO for Arrowhead Studios, tweeted out saying, strategic meeting with Democratic Council. We've decided that super citizens of Earth and its citizens need more officially regulated and mandated freedom. Like, d d is this guy, is this guy basically, like, I'm wondering, like, are, are, like, Um, what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to figure out here? <laughs> what is, what is, what does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? Nakey Jakey's the goat. Nakey Jakey is the goat. I binged watch like a ton of his videos in one day at one point. Have you tried checked out the new Enshrouded update at all? No, let's do that. Is there a YouTube video?
There is. Entrouded's first big update is out now. Don't like to read the patch notes? Then let's go over the highlights together and see what's new. I'm actually surprised that they're doing an... When did it come out? It's only been a couple months. I'm surprised they're doing an update already. Producing hollow holes, a series of unique, massive dungeons won in each biome. We've heard the community's call for more challenging combat exploration, and with this new update, we're excited to bring it to you. What? Bro, it's not even been like a couple months and they released massive dungeons for each biome? What? It, this is what I'm talking about. This is, this is what I've been talking about when I said that these like massive AAA companies do not have the flexibility to be able to do this kind of thing. They just do not. But these smaller companies can turn on a dime and just drop some like massive content out of nowhere and just completely flip an experience on its head. Like, this is crazy. No, this is, um, this is Entrouded, uh, the survival game, like RPG survival game. Very good game. I'm going to do a video on it. I'll notify you guys relatively soon. I'll, I'll do a video on it. With the introduction of dungeons, we are also expanding our enemy faction, adding new craftable props, more enemies, legendary rewards, and your hard won trophies, a mysterious crafting station with its own recipes, and new quests, one of which leads you to. Bro, th th that's a lot of content. That's a lot of content. New crafting, new crafting stations, new legendary weapons, new quests, new enemies, and dungeons. A brand new spooky NPC. But that's not all. We are also removing the 60 hertz limitation and updating our camera motion to support oh, wow. frame rates and refresh rates. Oh. We have also reworked one of our towns, Willow Crush, that you can explore, as well as some of our locations that have been improved and are now more polished. For those enchanted by mystical worlds and cozy underground homes, we've crafted round doors and windows just- We can make hobbit homes! We can make hobbit homes! I'm totally gonna make a hobbit house. Just for you, get ready to elevate your creations to new heights. Well, we'll check this out on stream. And wait, there is more. Well, not today. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll stream it. Uh, um, I'll stream it. Uh, tomorrow, maybe? I don't know. Whether you've had a long day and need a break, had an urgent need to isolate yourself and think for a while, or just want to enjoy the view with your friends, the possibilities are endless. Are you a botanist at heart? We've got you covered with potted plants. Simply visit Emily the farm once you have crafted a kiln to access various types of leafy friends. And that's not- Is that how you're supposed to say it? Is it kiln? I always thought it was kiln. <laughs> this is insane, man. Expanding the variety of tree seedlings too, available at your seedbed station. That's, and that's one of the things that I think a lot of survival games miss out on is that far too often these games will ignore like how people just want to make a cozy house and they really like the customization. I think a really good example of this is like Minecraft, right? So like more than anything, people really just like to build. You know what I mean? When it comes to these survival games, people just like to build and giving people more options to be able to like really live in a space is what players want. And it's awesome to see them deliver more on that kind of stuff. But it's also just wild to see how much other content they've added to this. Like, this is absurd. This is genuinely absurd. Now let's talk about quality of life updates. Our loot UI design has received an overall. You are also now able to... That's way better. ...stacks of items instead of having to furious... Oh! Oh, thank God. I'm actually happy that I didn't do my review of Entrouded because this is fixing a lot of the issues that I had with Entrouded before the game was released. Please spam the space button. The gift UI has also been greatly improved for ease of transferring items. Content of magic chests. Is yeah, but you guys didn't do the thing that I wanted unless it's going to be in this video. My biggest gripe for this game is specifically that I have to have like the blocks in my inventory. Sorry. I have to have the blocks in my inventory to be able to make uh like to build like they need to be i need to be carrying them and I don't, I don't really like that like it's an it's an unnecessary step that i don't that i wish wasn't there and it doesn't work with magic chess 
is also now available for workshops. That way, you no longer have to sprint from your chest to the workshop. Want a more in-depth player stats? We've got you covered. Nice. Stack splitting has also been enhanced, allowing for more flexibility. Uh, thank in you. Splitting stacks. Very good. Okay. With the new ping function on the world map. Multiplayer coordination just got easier. No more nice. shooting Steve for going in a completely opposite direction. Yeah, there's been times where I like I try to point out stuff on the map, but it's really difficult to do when uh, you didn't have like an accurate pinging system. And the other ping that you have kind of blends in a little bit too much, so it gets a little bit difficult for you to be able to try to like show your friends where you're trying to go. Simply point them to the this is good, man. This is really good. On the map. I just think it's crazy that they <laughs> they completely glossed over it feels like at the very beginning of the video. Like, oh, hi, we just added a garbage ton of content into the game. We, we're giving you dungeons, new enemies, new weapons, new items, new crafting stations, new missions, new or new uh, um, new quests. Uh, and then, you know, and here, now here's all this quality of life stuff. Like usually when we see these kind of updates for games, especially when they're coming from like an indie studio. Nine times out of 10, it's always smaller updates that only really have like, you know, we're, we're just focusing on quality of life right now, or we're just focusing on balancing. But the fact that they were able to pull off this much content in one update is just crazy. But I mean, think it, think about it in the context of like, they didn't just like, re they didn't release the game. They released the game into early access, right? So a lot of the stuff they were probably already working on, it just wasn't, it just didn't make it into the game for early access. But the crazy thing is, is that the dungeons that they talked about, we heard that you guys were asking for more content that were like challenging, um, uh, challenging combat, you know, encounters and stuff like that. So they added this on the fly and that's crazy. That's crazy. You added like a mega dungeons in certain biomes on a whim. That's crazy. It's got easier. No more shouting at Steve for going in a completely opposite direction. Simply point them to the specific area you want to meet up on the map. And lastly, for those struggling to find friends servers, worry no more. You can now locate servers via IP That's address pretty cool. with an added feature to conceal the address for those of you that stream so that Dark Sasuke will not raid your base while you are out on an adventure. Wow. <laughs> and you thought that this is it. There is more. But who am I kidding? If you're interested in seeing all the fixes and improvements, what? look out for the patch notes available on Steam. What is it all? Uh, add a new setting to graphical settings to control sharpness of image. Add a new setting to switch contact shadows on and off. Added, uh, added an option to switch off optional micro spiders. Micro spiders. That's terrifying. Uh, the multi-shot no longer consumes arrows when special arrows are selected. Oh, oh, oh no longer consumes multiple arrows when, when special arrows are selected. Uh, this made the skill too expensive overall. Uh, update the functionality of leech stat, e.g. ring of endless life. Is now a chance to convert a percentage of damage to dealt to enemies to the player. Wow, that's crazy. So a lot of it's just like buffing stuff in general. But who am I kidding? If you're interested in seeing all the fixes and improvements, look out for the patch notes available on Steam, Discord. Bro, I just love it when devs love their own game. I just love it when devs love their own game. And this really is just another example of that. This is just devs that really love the game that they're making. They love the community that they're making the game for, and they're giving the community what they're asking for because they recognize that it, not everything, you can't give us everything we ask for because sometimes not all of that really makes sense in the context of the game that they're making. But with that said, um, yeah, uh, like this is awesome. This is just great to see. And if you want to help us spread the word, comment below with good work, guys. And until then, we will see you in the next one. That's crazy. I, do you know what the funny thing is? Is that like initially when I initially when I saw the game, I thought it looked really pretty. I was really interested in the direction that they were going in. I got off of their uh, reveal trailer or their release trailer. I totally got the vibes of Divinity Original Sin 2, like that kind of dry kind of humor that they used in it a little bit, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and my expectations for the game were relatively in the middle. When I played it, my expectations were relatively blown out of the water because the game is awesome. The game's just a lot of fun. Um, it definitely has its rough edges. It has a lot of things that they need to work on, but a lot of that stuff they're already working on right now, and that seems awesome.
I, I the other thing that I'm hoping to see in the patch notes is that they got rid of like the need for you to be able to have stamina to use your uh, grappling hook. That thing that that's driving me nuts. Like running through different areas and like I get up and I'm out of stamina and I use my grappling hook and mid grapple hook my guy just falls. Like that I'm I don't know. That that need a little bit of change. But outside of that, like the game is just uh it's just a good game. It's just genuinely a good game. And uh and this is showing that they have that same kind of passion that is kind of is ne all right. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's the passion that's necessary for games to succeed right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if I go and I look right now. Enshrouded. Starts. Not a ton of people playing it. But the game, the game still sold relatively well. It hit a peak of 160,000 players, which is crazy. 26,000 players playing right now. Pretty good. Or 24-hour peak. That's cool, man. Survival games are kind of like that, though. I'm really interested to see. Like, the what's wild is is how much they've already changed the game within one update. How many things they just added to the game in one update, and already they're you know, like, what is this game going to look like by the time that it's done? You know what I mean? Uh, should you should allow you to red, rest mid climb? Yeah, like those are certain things that I'm used to from other from other like RP or not RPGs, but other action games that allow me to be able to like scale things and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That and I'll be honest with you, I'm not. I don't really know how I feel about games anymore that want to be made that don't like don't have the ability to, uh, um, like scale walls and stuff like that. Like not the ability to climb. I like in certain way in certain places it makes sense because you know like you're not gonna just climb the wall of a building, but I do think that that kind of stuff should exist when I'm trying to like climb the you know climb a cliff or something like that. You know, climb a mountain. I can't wait to give Enshrouder to try. Uh, when it's finished. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when it comes to early access, I, I usually make the stand that I say that I think the best thing for people to do is, you know, if you if you like the product, if you like the way that it looks, maybe you give it a try in early access for like an hour or so, and then you see if you want to continue to support it. If you don't, that's fine. I don't have any, pro I, I don't think there's anything wrong with people not supporting games in early access. Me, personally, if it's a product that I want to endorse, it's a, it's a product that I think is going to do well, I think it's going to be a good game, I'm going to support it. But three years ago, that was me with Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, I like, well, let's, let's look to see like what some of my, what some of my early access games are. Oh, it's like hiding my stuff. Um, I'll just move this over here. There we go. I, I guess you guys can't really see it. Um, Armored Core 6, not early access. Bellatro is early access. I am so addicted to this game. I like, I'm actually part of me is mad that I'm going to play Helldivers 2, even though I'm going to enjoy playing Helldivers 2, but I, I want to play Bellatro. Um, like, I'm probably going to play it a little bit before I play Helldivers or other way around. I'm not really too sure exactly what I'm going to do because I still wanted to show it to people because it's so damn good. It's so good. Uh, Battle Bit, that was early access. Super sick. Really awesome. Guys are still working on it. Love to see that. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 was an early access game that I, um, that I obviously supported. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Core Keeper. Uh, I have, I only have like 10 hours in it. Uh, I know that they've done some pretty large updates recently, but they still have a long ways to go with it. But I like, I like the core concept. I like the game that they already, that they already put out, uh, initially. I think it's a game that's well worth supporting. Coromon's early access. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really happy about this one to that, that much. Like it's not bad. But it's also not like fantastic. I think it's a game that just needs more time to cook, or maybe it's just trying to be too much, too much like Pokemon. Um, Crab Champions, <coughs> fantastic game, fantastic game. Uh, let's see here, what else? Uh, Death Must Die had an absolute blast playing this one. This is totally worth the early access money for sure. Plus, on top of that, most of these early access games are like cheap, 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 cheap. cheap. You know what I mean? Um, let's see here, Deep Rock Galactic Survivor. I'm going to be honest. Uh, it's, it's not the best survival game that I've, it's not the best survivor game that I've played, but I like the general direction of it. And I know that, you know, the, the deep rock people are like really into uh, supporting their game. So I think it's probably going to get better as time goes on. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else? 
and shrouded obviously looking for looking forward to the content that they're putting out with this this is a great investment great early access to support for sure um Uh, I don't know. There's probably a couple other ones on here. I think I got Raft when it was in early access. I had a lot of fun with this one too, actually. I had a lot of fun with this one. I really like survival games. I got a, a survival games are like an easy fucking an easy pull for me. I'll play just about every single one of them. Valheim would be another one then, because that's also another early access game. V Rising, another early access game that I that I support. Um. Supermarket simulator. Ian, stop getting me interested in more games. My wallet cannot keep up. Uh, Pacific Drive. I haven't had the time to do to do Pacific Pacific Drive. <laughs> Supermarket Sim, so good. Yeah, I play. So I was playing Supermarket Sim the other day, and I finally got enough money to be able to buy myself a clerk. But do those those guys like? They're slow. Like they take way too long. Like my uh, I, like I have to. I, I'm gonna fire him to be honest. I feel bad because I'm sure he has a wife and kids, but like at the same time, like homie, you take way too long. The customers are bitching about the fact that you take so long, and you're costing me money. So you gotta go. Words hard. Words are hard. Days in Fallujah. Yeah, I I don't know. When it comes to like shooters, I've been really picky lately. <laughs> I talked about that in today's video. Like I've just been really picky when it comes to shooters lately. I do love, I, I genuinely love like how, um, uh, I love how the discourse around Dragon's Dogma 2 has like shifted significantly where like now all of a sudden, if you like look on Reddit, like the people that love the game, like it's like, stop trying to rewrite history. The exploration in DD1 is awful. So people are like, the exploration is terrible in Dragon's Dogma 2. Like you have a ton of people like, look at, look at all this stuff. His own words from the IGN interview. Travel is boring? That's not true. The only issue is because your game is boring. Uh, all you need to do is make travel fun. Proceeds to put the same four enemy types in the whole, in the whole map. I don't know about all that. I, to be honest, like, there's a lot of like overreaction when it comes to some of the criticisms for Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, do you guys feel that way? I don't, I don't really think it's like that, to be honest. I think that... Um, um, I think personally that mob density is good. Like I'm always fighting something. So I appreciate that. Um, you know, once I've switched zones, everything, everything kind of, everything changes for the most part. But at the same time, I will say that, you know, like it's Griffins, Ogres, Cyclops. Rinse and repeat for like big enemies. And I would have liked to seen more, uh, more variety in like the larger world enemies that are just kind of like out in the wild that you can kind of run into. There is never any different archetypes. Yeah, I, I mean, like I like, but it doesn't really like take away from the experience, if that makes any sense. Like, it doesn't ruin my experience of playing the game that I'm fighting those enemies. Um, it does, however, make me wish that there were more. I think that's probably the better way to say it. It doesn't necessarily bother me. It doesn't make me go, oh, harpies again. I don't really like I just have fun killing stuff I'm having more fun with the combat than I am like worrying about the different types of enemies but I would say that across the board that I would like to see a little bit more um a little bit better uh monster variety uh I don't know why they got rid of some of the enemies in DD1 see maybe a development issues uh well see that's the thing I think that what happened with De with Dragon's Dogma 2 is the exact same thing that happened with Dragon's Dogma 1 this is supposed to be the game that was going to fit Hideki Itsuno's vision, but chances are it ran into the exact same thing where they just didn't have the resources or the time necessary because uh, Capcom wanted the game finished and everything wasn't everything wasn't set. Or maybe this is just the way that it is. You know what I mean? Watch. 
we're going to get a Dark Arisen expansion, a $30 or $40 expansion to the game. And it's going to add a, you know, a, a different kind of new game plus that adds all kinds of different monster varieties to the world, an endless dungeon and all kinds of other stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but no, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Like for, I, I don't think there's any beholders in this one. Like the floating eyeball guys haven't seen anything like that. Um, what else? Uh, there's actually a lot of enemies now that I think about it that aren't in, um, there's also a lot of enemies that they were in Dragon's Dogma 1 that aren't in here right now. So, yeah. Uh, reminds me of the Helldivers sub, Helldivers 2 subreddit the first couple of weeks. Reddit just sucks for a place of discussions. Well, I think that, um, I mean, Reddit is really good for, um, well, what is Reddit good for? Echo chambers more than anything else. Cause you have the opinion to have like the, the mob rules and the mob can just downvote, downvote opinions into the grave. Even if those are the right opinions, if that makes any sense. I thought there'd be a Hydra, but I haven't seen one. Yeah, exactly. That's the other thing too. So it's just like there, there's a, oh yeah, because there was the Hydra in the first one, wasn't there? The multi-headed snake that we fought like right at the very beginning village in Dragon's Dogma 1. Yeah. So like, I, and then like, you're like, just give it a try. Travel is boring. So you have people bitching about this still. Um, me adventuring through Dragon's Dogma 2 every time a pawn makes eye contact with me along the way. Resume. Yeah, that's so true. Um, it's always been like that in the first game isn't a good it's always been like that in the first game isn't a good excuse for a lackluster sequel people are people are coping so hard edit uh if if not why people already waiting for the expansion to fix a 70 dollar game Every time someone po points out a flaw, people say it's been like that in Dragon's Dogma 1. Hey, just because it's a uh, just because it was flawed in the first game doesn't justify it to be replicated or to replicate into the sequel. Some of these flaws are even a downgrade compared to Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen or Dragon's Dogma Online. Uh, for what is worse is that they even lied to us about the variety or armor variety and monster variety. And there's even things like people think this game is oh my god people think the game is bad because they didn't play the first game what people think the game people think dragon's dogma 2 is bad because they didn't play like oh oh dragon's dogma 1 players are saying that the reason why people don't like dragon's dogma 2 uh is because they didn't play the first game so you just wouldn't get it what kind of privilege shit is this um, it's been at least 12 years and it's a $70 title. Wake up, stop coping. Uh, also, similarly, while other Capcom games having microtransactions like this doesn't mean it's good. Yeah, that's it. Yes, yes, yes. People want to complain about microtransactions like Layered Armor and Monster Hunter Rise and they did complain and they did complain. Yeah, people did complain about this and people also did complain about Street Fighter 6. Nobody likes them and stop pretending like it didn't happen. Yeah, that's the other thing. Actually, you know what? Yeah. Redditor, I'm I I agree with you, Nick's Grant Grin Gin, Nick's Gnit. I don't know what his I don't know what his name is. No, I wholeheartedly agree. That's one of the things that I've seen a whole lot of people say. They're like, well, nobody complained about it with Monster Hunter World. Nobody complained about it with Monster Hunter Rise. Nobody complained about it with Street Fighter Six. Well, fucking shit. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. But, you're, but the problem is, is that what people try to do is they try to turn that and say, well, you didn't, though. You're just complaining about it in this game. You should have complained about it with Street Fighter. You should have complained about it with this. Well, I didn't play those games. Why would I have been? Why would I advocate for games that I haven't played? That doesn't make any sense. The internet was originally created for the, pro uh, for the propagation of cute animal videos and meme videos. And we mucked it up along the way. No, I'm pretty sure we were pretty unhinged to begin with. I still remember the chat room days. I still remember the chat room days. Chat rooms. MySpace. Except for... Oh, man. 
My MySpace was the superior social media platform. Because, like, at least with MySpace, you guys could click on my page and then you guys could hear the songs that I listen to the most and just play my playlist. And you guys could be like, yeah, I actually like this guy. <laughs> like, I, li I like this guy. He listens to the music that I like. AOL chat rooms. AOL chat rooms are fucking filthy. What are you talking about? Um, I think the misinformation from the lack of dev clarity on the microtransactions is the vitriol was so big. Oh, it's like it's like I said. The the reason why people are upset is because the game one isn't meeting the expectations that people set for it, and then also at the exact same time, um, that's also because of the fact that the game didn't perform well. So that's the reason why people are like, nope. Nope, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. If the game came out and it worked properly from on day one, most of the complaints wouldn't be there, except for the stuff that I think is starting to, starting to... I do think that some of the complaints that are starting to surface now definitely are, for sure. I definitely think that some of the complaints that are starting to surface now are for sure because of, uh, uh, because of like just general, um, you know, general stuff that people wish were in the game or wish the game did. If that makes any sense. I has cheeseburger never went away. Yeah, that's mostly just because millennial millennials don't have very good humor and uh, we often hold on to stuff far longer than we should because we're cringe as shit. I'm just going to tell it like it is. I'll put it this way, man. I still have friends that say I'm Rick James. <laughs> like, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Millennial here can confirm. Yeah. Yeah. You might need new friends. No, they're all like that. They're all like that. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? I can say something like that and like everybody's like, I know somebody like that. Damn shot right in the heart. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I can say something like that. Oh, fuck. I don't mean to set that up. I can say something like that and people immediately go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? Mark, you are one of those people. <laughs> You are one of those friends that I'm talking about. Democracy. You're exactly who I'm talking about. You are for sure that guy. On multiple occasions, I've heard Mark go, I'm rich, bitch. Sweet or, let, let, me get some, let me get some more of that. This Joe Rogan. Uh, Mark, you want to play some Helldivers? I'll bring you in. You want to play some Helldivers, bud? Yes. You need to get leveled. We need to get you leveled up. We're not doing any hardcore shit today. We're going to be trying to slow train a cadet. That's what's going on. We're slow training a cadet. So hold your horses Bye. before anybody joins the match. Let Mark join first. If you try to join yeah. before Mark, I'm going to kick you. One day, Riz will be considered boomer speak. It is. So I was trying to Riz up this girl, and she was like, it, it, "Okay, bibbity squat, skibbity toilet like, seat." I don't. There's a little, there's my old brain. Bibbity uh. uh, uh. popped. <laughs> Bibbity bop, skibbity toilet seat. <laughs> I don't understand any of that shit. I do. Okay, like so. I mean, I'm I feel old and that... I had young. I I work like I I manage a bunch of young people. Yeah. And so I get to like I hear them talking about all this like just using these terms, and I'm just like, what is that? And then someone's like, Riz is, uh, you know, charisma, and I'm like. But that's not how you used it in the sentence. And they're like, 
is what it is. But it's the act of using charisma. Because you can't say you're charismaing something. Yeah. I, I, you can't say I charisma that, but you can say you rizzed it. You rizzed her up. <laughs> I hit it with a riz. I, I put like riz, It makes sense. I put, I, I put riz up there with cap. Like the, the, both of those just needed to go away. No cap? Oh, please don't. No cap on a stack? <laughs> I think that's one of the be sorry, I'm, I'm I think that's one of the benefit I think that's one of the benefits to being involved in like internet culture is that you do for the most part evolve with the language that's used for the most you know what I mean yeah and, and you kind of pick up on it as you go uh but yeah yeah what are you fucking looking at say something small fractions of the bug population look at the back of your head resistant to the thermostat this sort of thing is to be expected of course all right yeah, of there course. we go Super credits. I'm gonna buy. No, I'm just kidding. What do we have to buy? Ooh, that is actually. That is. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is this the helmet for that one? It must be. Yeah. I'm trying to spin it. Oh, control. Ooh, what does it do? Reduces recoil and cross are prone. Provides 50% resistance to to explode. Ooh, sorry. Explosive damage. Bottom left is for the helmet. Exterminator armor sick. Yeah, it is actually really sick. But it doesn't give me throw distance. This also looks really sick. I like this too. I like this too. This is a really good look. That's pretty sharp. I'm not gonna lie. Recoil, increased grenade capacity. Is that heavy armor? Looks like it, yeah. fighting bots so i'm gonna i'm going we're going ah we're fighting bots i'm probably gonna go stealth yeah i probably go stealth reduce enemy range yeah let's do that i'm good with that oh, i need to change my my primary though i need to do, try something else ah uh, not the scythe how close am i to uh i'm almost done with my main war bond I'm gonna I'm gonna unlock the plaz. I'm gonna save up and get the plaz next. I wanna try out the plaz. Plaz the plaz some scorcher. What do you guys think? You guys like the plaz? Regardless if you get FRAs in school, uh they're all out in, they're all out in the world. That's some fucking sage wisdom. That's some sage wisdom. That is some sage wisdom. That's that's good. Yeah. <clears throat> I kind of fix this. It's just like No, I don't want to fix that. Uh, I think my daughter just <laughs> reverse drunk deal me with fruit snacks. <laughs> uh, all right. Where are you? I'm coming. I just started it up. Social friends. I'm gonna try this out for a little while. I have zero friends online. Do you need to join mine? Huh? No. Oh yeah, yeah. I can join you, cause you so you can you can complete your difficulties. That's, that feels good. Allied destroyer coordinates received. Uh, I think my uh, what, where was I at? Uh, that thirty percent throw distance is such is so clutch. Uh, and you feel so bad using different armor. Who are you telling? Who are you telling? If I could get an armor that had the 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 stealth bonus and the throw distance, I would never wear anything else. Anything. I wouldn't wear anything else. Literally nothing. No underwear, no nothing. 
Yeah, but armor, like, like going commando in armor probably doesn't feel very good. I don't like think those so. Cod piece armor things, yeah. I don't think it'd feel very good. I'll put myself over here. I'll let you guys grab the friendy, grab the friendy code real quick. That music sounds miserable. What music? Is there music playing that I don't know that's playing? My friend code is on screen. Oh, the, I thought he said music. I don't know why. Dude, I'm sorry. I have a, you know. So I'm not really too I'm not really too sure why I do this, but when I read sentences, I add words. Like I like I like your I quick read. Does, your brains do that. Uh, like they like they, I don't know if you've ever seen that study where like they can misspell every word and you'll still understand your brain still understands what what it is. Mm hmm. Um, and same thing happens. You're you're uh, you're just guessing what's next. Okay. Based off based off context. Hmm. It's a thing. Probably has to do with that third eye. <laughs> Ian puts Ian puts words into people's mouths confirmed. Yeah, actually true. Yeah. Actually true. Yeah. <sighs> Adding me? Come on, Ellie. Let's go. Put you to work. Have a cadet. Have I'm a... putting y'all to work. I'm getting carried. Ugh. So are we going pistols only or what? Hmm? Yeah. Pistols. No? Yeah, pistols only. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um yeah, so we're fighting the automatons. Oh, so, so you back, back out. out. Yep, back out. You should see that we have a we have a pri we have a uh, oh, a major. It's pretty, it's pretty pushed back. See, yeah, yeah. Why? Well, that's probably not going to last for long. Um, you see, uh, we have a uh, major order is to liberate Trost. Trust. Uh, one hundred fifty thousand players playing there, so that's probably the place. Malevolent Creek. Where's Tr Where's Troust? Probably in this in this area, yeah. There it is. Yeah. So yeah. So we have to we have to take uh, uh, Vandalon. Vandalon four is where we're gonna be at. It won't let me click it. Yeah, Vandalon. Yeah, because we have to we have to capture Vandalon four to be able to get to Trost. And then play on whatever the highest difficulty you have, and we'll we'll help you progress your difficulties. Oh, you want me to do the highest difficulty I have? That that you can do that you've unlocked. Which is probably five. You probably need to do five level or three level five missions and you unlock the next one. No, I think it's not five. I'm trying to there it goes indeed. Uh, I can do six. There you go. I didn't need all y'all staring what I was doing. Well, do you not like being watched? I mean, there was like all of y'all were just like leaned over my shit, just watching. <laughs> do you not like being watched? Is that what you're Jesus trying? Christ! Sorry, I missed. Uh, I missed somebody else's friend request. All right. Down we go. Oh, I'll wait till next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spots free up pretty quickly. Most people don't like hang out the entire time. Um. Yeah, I'd pro we probably want to hit this one first because this is kind of like fragmented. We'll go here. Yeah. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take auto cannon. Beakwood looks like uh, Princess Leia in Return of the Jedi. 
Really? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. You know, you know when she goes in there to yeah. save, uh, get Han Solo? Yeah. Got that. Yeah, yeah, boy, yeah, boys. Ready up? I was waiting for everybody to get their stuff. Everybody was already ready. Uh, I only play Helldivers 2 on the weekend because I'm a dad and have more time. Understandable. Understandable. I'm a dad and fuck them kids. Pistol, no ammo. Let's go. Full me full melee only play with bots on level six. This is That would go well. <laughs> that would go really well. Just don't watch me when I eat. That's like one of my things that like I don't I don't like to like eat on stream. That's why I usually like I would probably stream longer. But when it comes time for me to like want to have dinner, like the last thing I want to do is like eat my dinner on stream. Personally, that's just me. Oh shit. I feel super rusty. All right. Oh, that's probably not going to turn out well. Where'd you die at? Easy. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm trying to get out of the way. <laughs> I was like wondering why you are attacking the guy that's like standing right behind you. I was, I was frozen. There's a weapon right there. Spendable anti-tank, it looks like. Yeah, my God. Ow. Got accuracy for a Sniper against bots is amazing. I do like using the uh, anti-material rifle against bots. Yes, I do. Just trying something a little different today. You know what I mean? Just trying something a little fresh, a little something new. this mission map, updated. mission map updated we have a halt uh let's use that Oh, it shot behind me. It missed, but it hit the explosive barrels. That's what ended up happening. Yep, I'm with you. Do 
Did you get hit by one of the frost mines? Yeah, Mark's walking into everything that hurts him. I did once. I did once. All right. Really? Yeah. I haven't done it again. I've been right behind you. Keep my eye on you. <laughs> oh shit. Look at that. You know I can't avoid the four stuff. Is that a nuke? Yeah. We go in there and there might be some samples or something like that. Mark doesn't have any. He does not have samples. Is that that? Is that not the weak spot? Where are you supposed to shoot those? Where's the weak spot on the drop ships? I know you can take them out with an auto cannon. The four thrusters. Is that not where I was shooting? I was I thought I was shooting the thruster. Was I just not hitting the right spot? Ow. Sample collected. Dropping a pin. Southwest, far. Tagging her. Southwest, 200 meters. God damn it, I went and did it myself. Ah. <laughs> Shut up. You don't know me. I want a scorcher. Oh. <sighs> uh, maybe no direct hits. Not uh, with the EA. T with the EA. Yeah, I should have brought one of those too, but. Uh, I thought there was a real I don't really know. I, I thought I've seen people use the auto cannon to be able to take it out. I'm gonna go grab this real quick. We got plenty of time. Mark needs currencies and stuff, so I'm just gonna try to make sure we're hitting some of the smaller stuff while we're at it. I should fix that. We'll go back and meet up. We'll meet up with them. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, they're coming. Yeah, they're mad. I thought it was. I thought the barrage would take out their uh, their little fucking facility, but I guess it, I guess it didn't. I think capes are just like a really bad choice. <laughs> Why? Uh, if you think, uh, just think about it, like realistically, like yeah. it would be like a super bad choice to be like wearing a cape um, and shit. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's gonna get nasty as shit within like minutes, right? Yeah, and just but weighted down. But you get to look badass, and I feel like that's, that's kind of part true. of it. Like you have to, you have to earn your, uh, you gotta earn your stripes out here, bud. Yeah, I 
guess. We can go and take care of this uh, this objective while they take care of the other one. Right. Capes are awesome. Ban him. Yeah, I probably should actually. I didn't say the capes were bad. Supply. I just said it was a bad choice. My capes all shot up to shit and back. God damn it. <laughs> I've been seen. I need cover. There's no cover around here. Saved your life. Yeah, I saw that. Again. Jesus. I thought I was supposed to be getting carried. Oh. God damn it. gun is that auto cannon oh okay cool requires a backpack to use but yeah cape is field doo-doo operations yeah uh let's see here ammo here on the ground where are the codes I stupid. Got him. Making progress. Got a sample. Make very good content, my friend. Keep it up. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Glad you're enjoying it. Last thing I want to have to deal with is one of those damn devastators. Democracy is imminent. It is. There's nothing they can do to avoid it. It's coming for them regardless. Oh, shit. <laughs> was not expecting that. Rocket Devastator? Is that what it was that got you? Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. There's another one in the back. Who's that? Who's that? Bit Fury, thank you for the gifted sub, man. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, the rocket guys are brutal. Yeah, you know what the funny thing is? Like, I probably get cu I get killed by like uh, rocket raiders more than anything else. More than anything else, it's been a long time since I fought bots though. Uh, like, I I did a couple runs on like Malevolon Creek, I think like oh, or shit, like last week. Tank? What the fuck? Yeah, you can take you got you can handle that right.
Man, six isn't bad. Oh, we're actually on a map where you can see the explosion a lot better. So this time you'll actually be able to see it like legit, which would be really nice. Just hit Skull Admiral this week. Off to carry level one, sad a boy. That's doing your part. That's doing your part. You're the best YouTuber. Hey, I mean, I don't know about the best, but at least uh, second best. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, just got the game today. Uh, if the studios are going to keep making live service games, they should do a lot more like this game. Easily the best multiplayer in 10 years. For sure. For sure. W glaze. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Who doesn't love glazing? My favorite kind of donut. What's your favorite kind of donut, Mark? I like chocolate long johns. Okay. I was about to kill you. That's actually, that's actually based. <laughs> it's actually true. That's a that's a good a good pick. Yeah. I like the frosted filled ones. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Like like, you, like, like, the, like like a Boston cream on the inside. Yeah yeah oh yeah yeah. Like I really like uh, I really like the uh, maple donuts that have the bacon on top of them. Yeah 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 here come here Mark. Come over here. Right here. Wait for it. Wait for it. America! God damn. Never gets old. Never gets old. Oh. oh yeah, we're going to we're going to evac. What? Uh, I use the explosive damage uh, armor against bots, especially for devastators. Yeah, that's actually really smart. I just man, I'm just addicted to light armor. I'll be honest with you. Uh, this is one of the only shooter games uh, I'm actually good at. Closest game would be the division. Yeah, you know what the funny thing is? I feel like an oh, asshole yeah. because uh, I was talking about. Uh, I should have reloaded. Uh, I feel like an asshole because I... I'm gonna die. There we go. Uh, I feel like an asshole. Because I didn't bring up the division in my video when I was talking about like PvE shooters. And the division is like probably... Uh, arguably, I would say the division... Uh, I think that it's pretty good. I think that Destiny 2 is better from a gameplay perspective. Like it feels better to play as a game, but de but the Divi but uh, Division 2 is better as a loop game. If that makes any sense, like the gameplay loop of Division, I think is a lot better. Yeah, um, it, yeah it doesn't it doesn't uh, stagnate as much. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think like the moment to moment feel of gameplay is better in Destiny 2. Yeah. Regard yeah, like I, there, I got I got I got frack uh, because people just say I, I never I don't want to hear destiny and good in the same sentence. Like bro, shut the fuck up. Like I, I get that the game is not in the best place, and yes that they've had their their issues, and yes they've done some dumb stuff, but like as a game feel, and outside of like this dumb shit that they've done to their own game, it's still like at the core a good game. You know what I mean? Yeah, their uh, their their actual gunplay mechanics are great. That'd be like, like me. Great. Yeah, that'd be like me saying like, "Oh, Overwatch. Overwatch feels garbage." Like, no, Overwatch feels good. It's just not a good game anymore. Well, it used to feel good until they went to Overwatch Two. And made it yeah, that's true. Good. I didn't play Overwatch Two at all. It's not like it. It doesn't feel good. No. 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 Fuck. Get back. I want to play the Division 2 again. Uh, I don't like being squirreled away in, in that one client. 
bro if the division two arguably would be bigger than it is if it wasn't locked into ubisoft's client Going in uh yeah well i'm so sick of ea having its own client ubisoft's having its own client uh here's what you want to hear something really crazy is uh i guess it's not super crazy but diablo 4 is coming to pc game pass and you have to you have to sign up for BattleNet. Yeah, yep. well, they're going to integrate Battle.net into Xbox, uh, into the Xbox app. Same thing goes for on uh, on console as well. Easy. How'd you manage to do that? What? Alright. Beak. Uh, my first time turning into one of your streams. Love your videos. Very logical. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. If you said I fully expected Legend to be completely unhinged and illogical on April 1st. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe I, April 1st, I should just make a, uh, I should just make a video about like how much I love microtransactions. Just, let's do an inside, inside gaming type hot, uh, show. There you go. Jesus. Microtransactions. They're not that bad. There's something that I just love about being suffocated financially. You know what I like? I like getting uh, products and and then you find out that it's not complete and then they're going to sell it to you later. Oh, dude, I fucking love that. That like That's what makes gaming gaming, baby. I've been watching Shangri-La Frontier and I, yeah. I like like so remember remember it like you know in Shangri-La Frontier he's like a uh I fucking missed nobody saw that Did that kill the tank too? Yeah, it did. It crashed into the tank. That's awesome. Oh, dude. Wow, Mark. Wow. Dude, like, are you serious? <laughs> oh, shit. Jesus Christ. You know what? I bet Halo Infinite's online now that it's fixed better than this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, man. It's good now. Yeah. It's oh, good now. no. You know what? That, that's the funny thing is I always say, I have people, dude, you need to stop saying stuff about Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite's good now. And it's just like, bro, like, Halo Infinite did not pull a uh, No Man's Sky. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Halo Infinite didn't pull No Man's Sky. It is a better game, yeah, for sure. But the, I think that it, my perspective, the reason why Halo Infinite is better now is because players can actually make maps. So the players are making the game better, not yeah. the developers making the game better. Well, I think a lot that, and they did like have a mass uh, exodus, uh, not by choice of people, you know, the higher ups at 343. So that helps too. Yeah, that does. That does. Well, remember what I said earlier in the stream? So much of the stuff, some of the stuff that's uh, going on in the industry really just comes down to bad leadership. It's not really the develop. Yeah. Like all you gotta do is just tell the developers what they need to do. Yeah. Bad planning, not not using the money the, the way they're supposed to. I don't know. Like, I just saw that in a chat from North. Will DD2 pull a No Man's Sky? Like, I don't know how they're going to optimize it to not be on your CPU. I don't know what they have to do. Well, like, I, I, well here, here's I, the I thing. Here's the thing. Well, that's that's to say that it's optimized properly, that it's already using the CPU like how it's supposed that's, to. That's true. That's true. I don't think that it is. And then plus on top of that, like what's it, what's like making the matters worse is um, Denuvo is also running off of your CPU as well, right? Cat? Yeah. Yes, Cat. He's hungry, but I'm punishing him. He's not eating anymore. Can you, is there a way to turn turn Denuvo off? Uh, with your mind. Oh, okay. Pretend like I'm it's not there. That. All right, let's try this thing out. Like I just like in the Nuvo like anti cheaters or just anti piracy both so both is, at the same time. Does the why is there anti cheat? Elder, Makes no sense. Um, uh, because they don't want you because <laughs> they don't want you to cheat on the dragons. Okay. Right. It needs to be <laughs> a like, fair fight. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm fighting. Okay. I'm it needs like, to be. It needs uh, to be a fair fight with the dragons. There, dragon. Yeah. You're getting cheated on. Um. Yeah, so, okay, but the, uh, the anti-piracy, I mean, what if you put Steam in offline? Does the game not let you boot up offline? Um, I don't know, actually. Don't let the bugs kill babies. Yeah, do not let the bugs kill the babies. The Division felt design-wise more coherent. Yeah, I would agree with that. Division, Division, Division 2 are just fucking killer games. I'm just going to be really upset if the division, if the new Division game, the live service one that they're working on, is not going... Is it supposed to be free to play? Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be shit. It's going to be pay to win. But it's, it's going to be mobile it's, too, isn't it? it? It's Ubisoft, more than likely. I thought it was supposed uh, to be mobile as well. If that's the case, if it's mobile, and then, I, then I'm already out. Because you already know, like, the minute that they cross over yeah. into mobile the, is the minute when they're like, want to buy some rolls and some higher, higher grade guns? Where? Where do we want to go? Want to buy this? Want to buy that? Want to buy this? Well, the thing is, is Massive's working on uh, the um, Star Wars Outlaws game. That's their next game. Where are we going? We have to destroy their drop chips, and then we got to go north. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go here first. Go here? Can I buy? Can I buy your affection? <laughs> yeah. 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 Just make sure to click my link tree, and you'll be able to find the links to buy my affection. <laughs> oh man. Ready up, dude. Now you're just doing it out of spite. Yeah, I am. Division 2 was a cool game, but Massive isn't a studio I'm ter terribly confident in. What is Massive fucked up recently? Anything? No, I, I, I think Massive's I like, my biggest, <laughs> my, and from my perspective, Massive's the Ubisoft. only good studio Ubisoft has. It's more or less not Massive screwing it up; it's Ubisoft screwing it up with their shit. I think, I, I think they, uh, their end, their end game, 
Mm -hmm. um, thoughts and content hasn't been great. Like the base game's really, really good, but I think the end content's just not that good. I'm failing. Right, a lot of people like it. Wow, just throw shit on me. All right. I would go back and revisit the um, Division Two, like as a, as a as a retrospective thing. But I don't know if people would really be interested in watching it, to be honest. I don't know. Division 2 is in a really good state. I highly encourage others to check it out. Tons of builds, chase items, and activities to do. It all it also already it also arguably has like the best crafting system in like action RPGs slash, you know. Get fucked. Ooh, wow. Uh oh. That's a problem. Yep, keep it turned away. Keep it turned away. Uh, no, it's not reloading. Uh, uh. That's not good. Don't run by me. Super credits. Got a sample. Scorcher's actually like fucking good, dude. Calling in reinforcements. Low ammo, which kind of sucks, but outside of that, really good. God damn. Oh God! Wow, that was super danger close. Rare sample collected. I got the terminal. Hellbomb armed. Clear the area. Hellbomb armed. Everybody out. Everybody out. What difficulty are we playing on? Oh, it's just level six. We're we're helping our uh, our fellow cadet get uh get his difficulties get his difficulties unlocked. Oh fuck! I fucked that up. I didn't reload. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I didn't reload. Oh, that sucks. Don't shoot me in the back. You're not looking at me. You're looking somewhere else. Ow. What the fuck was that? Oh, shit. Oh, shit.
Oh, he's still alive. Holy shit. All right, homie. All right, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm playing like an idiot. did reload this uh, I see I've been playing on six lately I was too nervous to move up for a while um I, it's like I for me like if I'm just like chilling like one to vibe like stream and stuff like that personally I like seven six is okay um eight, eight honestly even eight's fine um nine for bugs nine on bugs I can I can play and stream and chat and chill and stuff um but uh, yeah, like like, but if I'm like trying to earn shit and you know sweat it out, then I'll play on uh, higher difficulties. But that's usually off stream when I can have like a full squad and communicate. Personally, myself, this is just a personal thing. I'm not true for everybody, but um, I really uh, prefer being able to do like nines with a squad and everybody has mics. Ow. Oh, Life. Landmine. Oh yeah, probably landmine. I just dropped you on your. It. I dropped your. Uh, dropped you on your stuff there. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Nice, super creds. Looked like it was super creds, unless it was requisition slips. I'm not really too sure. Seven is my comfort zone. I think a lot of people like seven. I think a lot of people, I, personally, I, I like seven is just like just fucking right. Like the like it can get it can get crazy, but it can also be like relatively controlled. Like it's just a good. It just feels good. Seven feels good to play on. Bro, Scorcher is like fucking absolute bot dominator. This is crazy. Like I've been playing the game a lot, but I think one of the things that I've been trying to do with, and I try to do with some games is that like, I try not to just completely binge on a game because if you binge on a game, what can end up happening sometimes? Well, one, you can burn yourself out. But more than that, I, I like I kind of like to be near the same level like that other players are playing a game on, if that makes any sense. No, yeah, it does. Like, like, like I like to be in a place in which I think that like, um, you know, the majority of like more casual players are likely to be like, bro, are you fucking serious? Um, because then like we can see each other eye to eye if we're playing and doing the same kind of content. I think far too often, like a lot of other like content creators, YouTubers, stuff like that. One of the things that they, co one of the things that they common, most commonly do is they become experts at a game. And then what ends up happening is, is that you don't really know exactly how to, you're, you're not communicating oh, in the same way. Uh, you're not communicating in the same language that many players are, are like used to. If you're a fucking super sweat at a game, it's hard for you to understand the concerns of people that are just playing a game casually for fun. If that, that at least that's my perspective. No, that 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 makes a lot of sense. It really does. Because like I have no I have no like I have no desire to be this a sweat at a game. I don't need to be good at a game. <laughs> like it, that doesn't really interest me anymore. You know what I mean? Like being being really good at games doesn't really interest me. Sometimes, like sometimes it does because it's fun to be good if that makes any sense 
um but from a but from like a creator perspective if it makes any sense for me like i like if it's more comfortable because that's me playing games like how i naturally play games uh but even more so it's uh um yeah that's just uh i feel like i, I can communicate better with people and stuff like that you want to try out the scorcher mark right here i dropped mine on the ground Uh, which, uh, thing is that in? Uh, it's the final weapon in the, uh, in the starting war bond. Oh, shit. Woo. Run from him. He will fuck your day up. Yeah, he did. Oh, you're not- I'm on ah! uh Oh! I was on fire. I'm gonna die. He's gonna catch me, too. Thank you. I think I'm level 40, but from uh, viewing your stream, you're more experienced in, than I am. Perhaps you should try moving up difficulties if possible. I, well, I, I'm, I'm helping a friend level up, so I don't really have any much of a reason to try to push up uh, levels or anything like that. Plus, on top of that, the thing is, is that if I pushed up difficulties, then I'm not talking to you, and I'm not talking to chat anymore, or paying oh, attention shit. to chat. Oh, and I think shit. that that's, uh, that's one of the other reasons why I don't do I don't do things that way. Otherwise, what ends up happening is, is that I'm too focused on playing the game and like I'll, I'll be real. I think like for the most, yeah, and I'm quiet, but I, I think that like most people when they come to watch a stream are not coming to watch a video game be played. Oh, no, 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 no. Get away from me. They're coming to watch the person playing the video game, if that makes sense. So it doesn't make, a, it doesn't make like, unless I'm like a, an ultra skill player, unless I'm like Shroud or somebody like that playing a competitive shooter then that's interesting content because you're watching somebody with crazy aim, crazy skills. You're able to learn something off of that maybe, maybe like take something away from it, pick up some type of skill or ability that you didn't have prior or something like that. But I think for the most part, especially for a person like me, like I, I would imagine most people are coming to like talk more than anything else. I want to have fun pri primarily. If the game is good, it'll encourage me to get better at it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know. I've gotten just like the older I get, the more I just want to play for fun. Like I could give a shit less. Yeah, I mean, like I, I can get it from that perspective too. Like age definitely has something to do with it. Uh, I, the, the thing is, is that like I think a lot of like outside of maybe like um, like Twitch movements for like first person shooters, um, that doesn't mean that like like older people can't be skilled at games. Oh, no, they can just no, be skilled at different kinds of games. Yeah, I'm, right? not I'm not I'm not talking like about a skill or anything. I'm just talking about like my attitude, how it affects me. You know what I mean? Like I like I don't I don't get mad at games anymore. Like even if I'm playing like Call of Duty or something, I don't get mad. I don't initially the first thing I call out is, "Oh, that dude's cheating." You know what I mean? Like I just just playing to have a good time. And some people associate uh winning every match is the only way they're gonna have a good time right bigger so. uh bigger number better person yeah that's how that's how youtube works bigger number better person oh fuck he's coming up behind me get off of this i think he used that swing aim that this thing has I'm a wrist. I'm a wrister, dude. I don't arm it. What arm me? Yeah. Um, I don't as I don't I don't anymore. Like, my sensitivity is like my sensitivity is pretty low still because it's I, I like having lower sensitivity, but I don't know. Like on a shooter like this, I'm all wrist on this game. Third person shooters and now on a first person shooter, it's the opposite. On a first person shooter, yes, for sure, I'm I'm arm aiming. It's just easier for me that way. Um, but third person games for sure. Yeah, no, I'm not using like, I'm, I'm using wrist aim. I reloaded on accident. <laughs> Age of Empires 2 has insane players and most of them are quite old now. Yeah, exactly. That's that's inky, that's the exact that's exactly what i'm talking about like like older older folks can uh regardless of age like there's different like games that become like 
I, I wouldn't yeah, imagine like, like first person like shooters CRBGs. like sweating it out in, in Call of Duty and shit yeah. like that. Like, no, you're probably not going to see a lot of like 50 plus year olds playing games like that. Yeah, uh, CRPGs are my, my jam now. CRPG strategy games, stuff like that for sure. I think. Thinking, Where is the SD? I think we already dropped it. Or it's already been put in. Map variety so far has been pretty good. In what? This game so far? This round? Yeah. I, I don't know what it is, but they have, they have, like, they do really have it. Like, outside of that one shitty map you and I had before, I really haven't had any bad maps. Like, for the most part, everything that we've gone through and everything we've found has always been, um, like. Is that the I, uh, Eye of Sauron over there? Yes, actually, it is. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Holy shit. I turned the wrong corner. Uh, true. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of new streamers don't realize this. They think that it's about a game when it's really about the person, connection, character, relatability. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and plus on top of that, that's the other thing too. Because I've had people ask me that before. Like, why aren't you playing on nine? What the fuck? And it's like, bro, I make videos about like how I feel about games. You really think I'm like trying to play <laughs> games skilled? What the fuck are you talking <laughs> I mean, about? Feels, man. Yeah, like what the fuck are we actually talking about here? Let's 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 think about this rationally for a second. You know, do I make videos about how high skilled I am? Do I make videos about, you know, I post clips of me fucking 360 no scoping and it's no, 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 no. Like the business side of the industry oh. is the one thing that probably interests me more than anything else. Like what makes games succeed? Uh, that kind of stuff I think is just really fucking cool to think and talk about. Uh, because I think talking about those kind of things and having that kind of discussion does make games better in the future. I think it does too. I mean, like they always say that they're listening, right? Uh, yeah. Pro problem is, is like it, the same, the, the, the same as like Twitter is the silent majority or the, the, sorry, the loud minority. Uh, you, you could like your videos, for instance, can fall in that same instance because the majority of people are just they're just going through the motions and just buying whatever games come out. You, you know what i mean like casually or whatever yeah so it's hopefully it brings more awareness for those type of people yeah you know what actually something that's super funny is that somebody uh uh somebody popped into one of the live streams um recently uh and they were like uh Somebody get somebody hopped into the one of the live streams recently and was basically like, um, you know, because uh, I said something about that. I'm like, one of the reasons why I like making videos like the videos that I do is specifically because of the fact that I think it brings more awareness to, you know, what consumers really want in games, what we really appreciate. And then we get to dissect those things and understand them better for ourselves so we can make more educated purchases in the future. But then also at the same time, I said that, you know, one of the reasons why we talk about these things. All right, let's get away from here, Mark. Hell bomb's about to blow. Uh, oh, one of the other. Oh, oh sh run! I climbed. Run! Oh, you're fucked. No! Save the dive. It saved me. Yeah. Um, one of the things that uh, I lost my train of thought there. So, like, developers and developers in the industry do watch content creators they watch videos that we make they 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 listen to the because here's the thing if you see a video from a content creator that's talking about some issue in, in the video game industry and it has 300,000 view, 300,000 views 400,000 views 
and a lot of the comments are people that are agreeing with them guess what you literally just got free consensus data yeah you know what i mean like you just got free research so one of the things i was like uh, uh i talked about that in one of my videos where i'm like you know one of the reasons why i like to talk about you know industry issues or one of the reasons I, I talk about the things that we like in games or what i would like to see more of in games is because developers do watch videos like this and do listen to the community especially when they're in the early stages of building a game uh because they're trying to figure out what players want and they're trying to build what they want and uh somebody came in here and they're like dude you're the most what do they say to me they called me um uh you, you like you must be one of the most narcissistic people i ever know thinking that the gaming industry watches your videos and i'm like What the fuck is wrong? Uh, like, what the fuck is wrong with people? You've, you've <laughs> had plenty of people come in. You've had people from Larian come in and say thank you for supporting their game. You've had, I mean, you've had quite a few different developers come in. That, that's kind of stupid. Like, it's stupid to, to think that, you know, I guess if it's, you know, it's not in the comment sections, if they're just, you know, DMing you. You, you know what I mean? Like, since they don't get to see it publicly, that it's, you know, it's no one's doing it. You don't think that's nah, just dumb. That's dumb. Yeah, it is. No, it, it genuinely is dumb. Because like, here's the thing, like, like just taking a, a fucking a, a, an example of one. Right. So like one of the most viewed videos I've ever made is called Baldur's Gate 3 is getting bigger. And uh, uh, and it's just talking about the stuff that was coming in the future for Baldur's Gate. Right. And uh, um, that video got uh three quarters of a million views it's a lot of fucking people are you trying to tell me that no developer watched you know a video game developer didn't watch something like that you know what i mean like it's not like an ego thing it's just like a fucking numbers thing <laughs> like come on and also on top of that yeah people a couple people from larry and thanked me for the video Which is a really cool feeling, by the way. It's, it's super awesome. I mean, the product we love. It's a product they love. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. That was sick. Liberty. Tank. Yeah, I see it. I just can't hit from here. I mean, I can, but I just can't hit what I want to hit from here. I think somebody else just got it. I think it blew up on its own, maybe. Holy shit! I was, I was pelting it with the. I thought that was a, I thought that was a cameraman. Like <laughs> 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 a fucking rocket raider just came up and you're just like, I'd like to interview you for straw man news. Yeah. Can I talk to you a moment about your car's warranty? Do Diablo 4 devs watch your YouTube as well? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. I don't think they're watching anything, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know. No, no, it's pretty. Anything. No, it's pretty obvious, man. After watching the, uh, after watching the uh, developer, um, or their their last developer thing, they for sure have been playing Last Epoch. I think they just I couldn't. I think they just couldn't figure out how to play. Uh, or. I, I just think they, they couldn't figure out how to play Path of Exile, so they never played that one. That's why they couldn't learn anything about it. I mean, I, I don't blame them for that. Mark? What'd you do? I didn't die. I, I know. I, I haven't even fired. I know you didn't die. I didn't fire anything. I promise you I didn't. I promise you, I was standing around doing nothing. 
Not what the, that's not what the death screen said. Well, you know, I don't know what to tell you because I didn't do shit. You don't sound, you don't sound if, truthful. If the rocket launcher doesn't fit, you must have quit. Does it fit where? Where you were standing. Where so, was, and how did you know where I was standing? You weren't, I mean, it's a game. You gotta be standing somewhere. <laughs> so, just saying, <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Uh, I love if you started. I would love if you started making video essays about older games like KOTOR or something. Uh, would just be super curious uh, with your perspective. Well, funny enough, that wish is coming true soon. Coming to a YouTube channel. Coming to a channel near you. I bet they listen to Riker. Um. Some people just uh, sigh, move on with your date. Yep, for sure. Uh, some people are just so tribalistic when it comes about criticism and uh, criticism with their game and platform. Absolutely true facts. Uh, the body flying over you. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Um, oh man, holy shit. Uh, authenticity is, cur is the currency of the future. We're seeing the value and change. Your timing is perfect. Thank you, appreciate that. Thank you for the follow over on Twitch too, by the way. Corrupt. Uh, if Asmongold is watching your videos on the regular on his uh, on his live stream, I'm pretty sure developers are seeing it as well. Fuck, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that. Getting partner. Got you on Twitch too. Here's to you getting partner. Partner. Partner in what? Aren't I, I'm, aren't I? Oh, yeah. That's a whole other thing too. I forgot Twitch has a partnership program too. Yeah. Yeah. I actually didn't even think about that. Uh, oh, shit. Asmin has been watching. For, uh, um, uh, yeah. So actually, now that I think about that, Asmin, like some of Asmin's most viewed videos are mine. Uh, the Helldivers, he watched my Helldivers 2 as a wake-up call. He got like 1.5 million views on that. I'm butthurt that I didn't get 1.5 million views on that. Next time, maybe. One super herb. Does partnership on Twitch mean that much nowadays? Um, I think Twitch partners get like a higher cut of their uh, of their sub revenue, like uh, uh, a better split. Do friend code. Oh, here I'll, I'll give you guys a chance. A little late to the party. Would you miss everything? Literally everything. Literally the best stream that I've ever had. Period. Ever. What's today? Is it a Wednesday? Yes. It's thrown me off completely because I posted a video today rather than yesterday, which means like now I got to figure out what I'm going to post my second video. I still have to figure out what I'm even going to post my second video on, to be honest with you. Uh, doesn't it require to run a lot of ads to get that cut? Probably. 
But at that point, like, I, I think you're having, like, a lot of people sub to you and stuff like that. As, stuff like that as well. So it's kind of like... I don't know. I'm, like, I'm not super interested in that kind of stuff. Request orbital for my wife all the time, and it never happens. <laughs> it's like, are you high? Good. You know what's actually really funny is that like, like I thought like last year was just like an absolute banger year for video games, but like this year is actually turning out to be just as good. Actually, it's the start of this year is actually better than the start of last year. Oh, for sure. Um, Reloading. So we'll see. On. We'll see what the second half holds. You know, I'm also. I'm also. I was thinking maybe you can. You'll can think about this. Uh, I think we're like the games that we're getting now are the 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 COVID games, basically. You know what I mean? They're the oh, like the games that we're cooking during the vid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what the games we're getting now, and a lot of them are, you know. It's the teams that were able to work through it that do a better job than the ones that didn't. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping this next batch of games that we're starting to see not, you know, are going to be a little bit better, a little bit, a little bit more polished. I didn't reload before I grabbed ammo. It's stupid of me. Yeah, I would agree with you. Like, I do think that, like, uh, like the beginning, of, the beginning of this year has just been like, you know what it is. The beginning of this year has just been stronger than people thought it would be because there's just been yeah. so many games that like nobody expected anything from. Yeah. I think that's really what it comes down to. Like, I nobody really expected. Try that sand land. Is that Sandlands out right now? Uh oh, the Akira Toriyama game. Yeah. I I don't know. I got yeah. I would imagine it has to be. IGN gave it a nine. Because that actually looks kind of cool. Uh, does it also on top of that? You know, another game that I completely fucking thought I've completely forgot about is uh, that um, that action RPG that's being made by um, oh, what the fuck? Are, what's their name? Um, it's the the same people that do Persona Atlas. I think it's an Atlas game, right? Yeah, Atlas. I forgot, um, what the hell is it called? I think it starts with an M. Ah, oh, here's another bullet. 
another. I got one. it. I got it. It's full. It's full. Metaphor. I think that's what it's called. So there's that. Um, does the mana game come out this year too? Uh, yeah, I think so. That's just fucking crazy. So there's like way more stuff. I need to actually sit down and make a list of like all the games that I want to try to make sure that I cover this year. I like try to put my eyes on and things that like maybe I could divine the stars and figure out what are going to be like the sneaker hits and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, sneaker hits. Dude, I'm super excited. I know you're not. I'm like, the more I watch on that Dune survival game, it looks pretty dope. I, we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's a, it's a survival game, so you'll I'll buy it. So you yeah, it's a survival. It. It's a survival game, so I'm gonna play it regardless because I like survival games. It's just the problem is when I see like survival MMO, it's just like, dude, how many times have we seen these games already come out and fucking suck? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like I feel like when these games try to do too much is when they fail. Oh, fuck, I didn't think I was gonna hit that. Hey, there's a little crazy, crazy boy there. I was feeling hot. Probably helpful. Probably really helpful if I reloaded, huh? Oh, we gotta fucking go. I'm over here wasting oh, time. Shit. My bad, dude. <laughs> that one I did. I did do. <laughs> you look like a goddamn robot. Calling in reinforcements. Oh, he already called him in. Okay, it's bugged. Yeah, I'm with you. God damn it. Looking at the map. Helldivers, I'm going to probably say that Helldivers should, like, so far, game of the year, yeah. The only thing that I will say is that, like, Dragon's Dogma 2, outside of the issues that it has, once those issues are fixed, people are going to, people are going to remember it, like, relatively, like, people are going to remember it more fondly. Um, however, alongside, bro, I'm not paying attention. Um, I think that Dragon's Dogma 2 will still be in the running because Dragon's Dogma 2 still at its core is a good game. Um, does it have its issues? Yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah, obviously. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be completely out of the running by any means. Uh, critically, if critically the game did well. Gamers don't make that vote, by the way. Uh, journalists do. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. coming from every direction dude yeah i know welcome to fighting bots man um like i said seeing as how this one's my first dragon's dogma i have a i think i have a different experience or opinion of it so Dead. drop me right in the net i'm dead um I feel like I'm going to be recommended, but I doubt I, but I doubt it'll win. Yeah, it's going to be recommended, but I don't think it'll, it might not win. Helldivers 2, 
uh, might pull like a fucking, you know, Baldur's Gate where, oh, okay, I just dropped into a pile of enemies. I'm oh going to God. die. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. Who put me here? Who put me here? <laughs> there was no cover and enemies on all three sides. <laughs> what, the f what the hell was that? it's gonna do uh, like the core experience is pretty good you know what i mean um zapper thank you for the raid there's a couple there's a couple like i have i have nitpicky like actual game stuff not nothing to do with performance or anything like that that i no no no, no. i like i think like dragon's dogma 2 to totally deserves it just as much as any i i think like it, it deserves a nomination along with anything else obviously like it it, it has its it has its hang-ups for sure but um i think helldivers 2 is obviously in the running that's pretty obvious it, it, too much of a too much of a hit over the year for people to be like nah nah this isn't good you know what i mean um uh what else I wonder if uh, Tencent is going to get Pal World on the Switch. You really think Nintendo would allow it? No. No. Like, not in a fucking million years, right? No. There's no way. How much did How much did Tencent buy them for? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I, I believe... Didn't Power World sell like 20 million copies? 25. Dude, that's a lot. It's funny because there it's it's funny because uh Pocket Pair CEO said all he wanted to do is just make like one hit game and retire. Yeah. And all he did was just make the game that everybody else was afraid to make. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm out of ammo. That's not good. Yeah, I think Pal World will also probably be wrapped up in there as well, just because it was such a like such a major seller this year, right? Um, even yeah. I don't know though. At the same time, because like critics hated it, remember? Yeah. Like like the fucking gaming because, journos hated that game. Yeah, because it was Pokemon. Well, yeah, because they because they suck because they suck Pokecock, right? That's why. Yeah. I think um, for the follow over on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. Let's I mean, see, they, they, like, uh, big, big titles still to come out. You've got uh, Hellblade Two, which. I don't know how that's gonna no. go. I know the first one was pretty critically acclaimed. Uh, yeah, I didn't get a it didn't get a game of the year nomination though. No, no. Um, so we'll see how that goes. It really, we need to see what's coming up in the summer showcase, right? Yeah. Get some, uh, get some dates on some stuff. Critics were just on a hate train. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> oh, god damn it, the tank. Get them bugs. Fuck. Not the bugs. How do I miss a tank? How did I, I miss know. it? What is up with this thing? Whoa! Sir? You missed it too. Wait, what kind of tank is that? I haven't seen that one before. Oh, I'm dead. I'm stuck. Thank you. Oh, 
fuck. <laughs> I just killed my teammate. What tank was that? That's not the normal tank. Anti-air tank? Oh, okay. Stalker 2 is supposed to come out this year. Uh, Elden Ring DLC will obviously get a nomination I, for Game of the Year. I almost think Stalker got uh, delayed. Like, till next year. I might I might be misremembering that, but I know mm. it got delayed because of like uh, the Ukrainian stuff. So I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have to. Well, in Black Myth Wukong's in the fall. I dude, I I don't know something. I, I'm suspect about that game. It looks really cool. I'm just suspect. DLC can get nominated. Absolutely, DLC can get nominated. I'm almost positive it can. Wasn't Cyberpunk uh, um, uh, Cyberpunk's yeah, was, uh, nominated? It was nominated for something. I think it was like a ongoing game or something like that. I don't know if it, maybe it can't get nominated for Game of the Year. Um. Final Fantasy XIV's expansion can get nominated. Look at, look at gold, Golden Fang carrying everybody. I like it. Welcome aboard, Helldiver. We can never have too many heroes fighting for peace. That's right. I am a fucking hero. I actually do like this cape. This cape is fucking baller. I don't really want that. I don't know which one I'm going to do. I'll probably do cutting edge first. Isn't the arc thrower not working? No, that's all worked. That's all fixed. You can kick it up to seven if you want. You, you should have just unlocked seven, right? We'll see. The shotgun and the cutting edge is meh. Isn't the sickle's pretty good though. People like the sickle. What about the? That's what I'm using. I what love about it. what about the the last one? What is that one like? What is it called? The blitzer. Is that the shotgun? This isn't the shot. Oh, it is the shotgun. Oh, there's two shotguns. Sickle is awesome. Yeah. I didn't do this one at all either. I'll be honest. I wasn't really interested in any of the stuff from it. The only one that I want is... Uh, Oh, not really any of it. Not really any of it, to be honest. I'll probably save it. We'll do cutting edge. Because I definitely want the localized confusion, for sure. For sure. I also like this. I also like this cape, too. It's really sick. If it's red, I can't do it, right? I don't understand what you're asking me. Difficulty? The color. Yeah. Oh, no. Never mind. Because I can go up to nine. No, you can't. It says Im complete impossible operation to oh. unlock. Complete suicide mission to unlock. So to to unlock a higher tier of difficulty, you have to have run a full run, a full run of missions to be able to oh, do okay. it. Okay, so I'm on seven. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then you can only you can only land on the highlighted planets. So this one. Right, and for us to be able to get access to Trost, we have to be able to clear Vandalon. But we're not going to get like we that's why we're working with the rest of the community right now to free uh vandalon so then that way we can get access to trust you took the frequency first booster one, is noticeable not today you want? Is that what you want? 
You want it there? Hundred <laughs> percent. That's my cape ever since I unlocked it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's there's uh there's definitely some there's definitely some games still coming out. Again, I think that Atlas game is probably another one that could easily be a good runner because people really like Persona games and a action Persona game is really interesting. Or a, or a persona style game in a different kind of universe is really interesting uh plus on top of that i'm a big fan of like anime cutscenes and stuff in games um shout out to uh tales games can i only get three if i do that we got three sure. why well, we only get three yeah, it's because you picked a higher difficulty. Are more modifiers. More more negative modifiers. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Mark? Oh, okay, never mind. I see. You're taking a grenade launcher. I didn't realize you picked the backpack too, so you have extra ammo. One last stratagem is depressing. Yeah. I don't really like, I don't know. There's certain things that uh, like, I feel like they maybe could probably do like a rework and that's like negative modifiers. I think negative modifiers could use a rework. It wouldn't be a bad idea for them to do that. Or like to look into like doing like because they already got rid of one of the negative modifiers. There was what was it? The randomizer. It just didn't. It just didn't work the way they thought it was going to. The randomizer one was ass. That was so bad. That was that. It was bad and it was also bad with like the messaging of the company as well. Because the company messaging, oh well, you know, just use uh, uh, just use uh your stratagems to be able to. Oh fuck off. To be able to deal with enemies. Uh, and it's just like, yeah, but you have maps where we literally don't have access to stra like We don't have access to specific stratagems. So it's like, why would you say that? They're like, oh yeah, just use your stratagems to take care of, uh, you know, more difficult enemies. And it's just like, yeah, but you have ones that are completely random or like, we have no idea what I'm even throwing at the guy. Yeah, I know it got hit. I didn't think it was going to. Oh God. I just saw it. I was like looking for my equipment. Tesla coil kills no, it wasn't mine. This is mine. Oh, you brought the Tesla coil. Mm -hmm. I never used it before. Yeah, I can tell. I didn't even mean to throw it. At. I was actually just picked it up. Or I was meant to. I just did the code and I blew up and then it just dropped it there. God damn it, and then I laugh and fucking walk into one.
Ow, fuck, that hurt. <laughs> I like looked over at chat and just immediately walked onto a fucking mine. They both thought it was like a two shot now. If you run into him, oh, okay. I threw you right by your stuff. He also threw me right next to a fucking mine. Uh, that's not where I threw you. That's where you landed. Oh, fuck me. I'm just gonna pretend like it didn't see me. Let's go. We need to catch up with everybody else. Oh, we gotta go this way. That's not good. Is that a rocket devastator? Over there, yeah. Tank despawns, Hulk waiting, yeah. Nice. Oh, those mines are tricky right there. Around here, yeah. Oh shit, oh, that ain't good. Fuck, I need to reload. Come on, move, move, move. Don't sit in front of the screen. If I stay here, oh, it, that's kind of bullshit. me some lost planet vibes bro i was just thinking of lost planet yesterday capcom's actually kind of selling by letting that game die the way they did but i mean lost planet 3 was a pretty big fucking miss
No, cat. Get down. It sits right on the keyboard. Holy what shit. <laughs> I watched that. It's that fucking tower. Never mind. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Why you got to piss him off? Uh -oh. I was just walking. Oh, okay. Why you got to point it at us? The fuck? What did I get hit by? Cat's name is Maddie. Well, that ain't good. What happened to you guys? Oh, uh, we did. Well, I can see that. God damn it. I'm like low on ammo too. Not good. Oh. Where's my backpack? Super Destroyer leaving low orbit. Emergency extraction shuttle deployed. Yeah, no, that I sucks. Just wait for it to come. No point doing this anymore. Yeah, we might as well just bug out, huh? Only problem is we're gonna figure out how we're gonna how we're gonna uh, survive long enough. Hey man, I was trying to do my best. I don't know how the fuck I missed that grenade. I didn't even see oh, it. You got it. What do you mean you got it? Oh god. Oh yeah, that sucks. Still was a successful mission. <laughs> All right. Oh no, 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 that's not what I meant to do. Oh, 
Oh, it doesn't have any ammo. I thought I reloaded it already. I just thought I only had one shot. Have faith in you, boys. Get in that fucking ship. Stop! Oh my god. <laughs> Sweet liberty by land! The regular heavy devastator will delete you if you're wearing light armor. Yeah, I know. Part of me wants to switch to heavy or mid or medium. No, I haven't got any of the uh I haven't got any of the the um the new stuff yet, like the stun grenade or whatnot. Let me feed the cat. No, mine's not. Oh, shit. I gotta touch the talk and I forget. I don't even know which button it is.
All right. All right, cadets. We're back. Did you know, Mark? Yes. I haven't ordered DoorDash in three months. Really? Yep. Nice. Are you just, are you like, like you're, oh, I'm a better person than you. Is that what yeah. you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Literally every, um, son of a bitch. every, uh, like, uh, content creator, YouTuber that I talk to, uh, a lot of them are really bad about it. A lot of them are ordering food all the time, and I'm like, yeah, I get it. You know, you're working from home. The temptation to do so is extreme, but the crazy thing is like once you start getting away from like ordering a lot ordering out a lot you realize just how much money you're wasting doing it you're like holy fuck oh yeah it's it is it is a big waste of money but i do like to order me a pizza every once in a while I went up to medium. Let me buy I'm gonna Oh okay. Well this is all this is heavy. I'm gonna buy that other armor from the store. Because I actually like it and I want it. Can I not? Because I'm in this. No, I can't. You want me to unready? Yeah. Spent a good day just trying, just spent a good day just spending around a hundred dollars on DoorDash for some sushi. Man, that sounds fucking so good though. It's so funny. Like I, like I'll see like uh, I'll see like uh, YouTubers and stuff that'll not YouTubers but like Twitch streamers and stuff that have like um, this one works right. Yeah. I see. Uh, okay, I'm good now. Uh, I'll see like uh, streamers and stuff that have like that like donation gauge or like sub gauge like my sub goal and stuff like that I'm like I, I'm like I would one day just have a, a fucking DoorDash gauge <laughs> like, like dead serious that'd be the way to go like hi guys so feed me <laughs> yeah that actually looks really sharp I'm not gonna lie that looks really sharp. We need a good cape to match it, though. Um, go back to the old gold, baby. Maybe. Right, go with it. We'll go back to go back to basics. Got to have your glam on, man. No, I'm gonna keep that one. That one looks. All good. Uh, should have a gauge how much calories you had today from people donating money to see if well, I wouldn't like just have people ordering me food all the time. It'd be a terrible thing. I'd have like three. I'd have like three chins, man. I don't want to have three chins. One's good enough for me. One's good enough. One extra one or just one total? Ah, uh, just one. Oh. Just one. Yeah. That's why I'm making grow beards. So you can cover up the second one. <laughs> the second beard? Yeah. No, the second chin. Oh. Two beards? 
Yeah. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> Why not EMS yeah, my, Mortar? My, my second beard. I think somebody else brought EMS Mortar, that's why. Yeah, somebody else probably brought it, I think. Hopefully. If not, then... Oh, shit. Risk friendly fire? Friendly fire with an auto cannon? Are you kidding me? I didn't, I, took, I didn't take mortar, I took auto cannon sentry. I don't have to worry about shit with that. I mean, it can sometimes get auto, like, uh, friendly fire, but most of the time, no. Oh, right off the bat, huh? Uh, I can do a walking barrage, or I can do a barrage on it. But I think that'd be kind of tough. I think that'd be kind of tough. All the fucking mortars back there. Nice. Good shit. Grenade launcher, baby. Fuck. Yeah, I'm gonna take care of it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh my. Oh, I'm fucked. So fucked over oh, here. Oh no 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 no! Oh, that fire is no joke, dude. Oh fuck! Wrong corner. <sighs> Ooh. Damn, you got chunk. I mean, now I am, but the reason why I wasn't dead before is because of top plays, super movement. God gamer. Jesus Christ. Freedom never rests. Freedom never rests. Oh, we got to take out that fucking thing now. Hey, found it. Malig! Artillery? Oh, fuck me. Warning, you are in range of enemy artillery. Yeah, I know. How the fuck did that shot go? I get my shit. I'm gonna try. Probably not the smartest idea, but I'm gonna do it. Warning, you are in range of enemy yes, I know. I'm gonna try to do something about it if you can stay. Shut the fuck up for a minute. Where the fuck is it coming from? I'm gonna get hit by that, aren't I? Maybe not. Where is. It's up here. I got eyes on it. Shit. God damn it. Another devastator. For real. Oh shit. Said it. Uh, 
Nope, I'm dead. Yep. My shit is forfeit. There's no way I'm gonna get back to it now. I'm not going all the way back over there. Too much shit going on. Hello. <laughs> what the? What the fuck? <laughs> I just saw him standing next to me. Like, what? No, 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 no. Joining the fray. Keep running, Mark. Don't stop. Keep them legs moving. Dude is back. Dude is back. There you go. Those things suck to try to take on yourself, but if you got somebody else with you, they're not too bad. But they like you. You're good. Oh, fuck me. Can't see my cross here. There we go. Yeah, I'm interested in trying out the sickle. I haven't tried it out yet, but I've heard good things. People really like, like it, it, especially on the col on the got the sickle. Oh, that is the one off the. Yeah, people yeah. like it, and people I like, like it a lot. lot. I don't run out of ammo, which is I like. Yeah, it's really nice on these cold levels too, because you're gonna. You're, I'm gonna worry about it overheating. Spread that democracy, ain't that the truth? Can't be any old democracy though, it needs to be managed democracy. Managed and localized freedom. Walking. You don't fucking see me. You guys can fucking stop. Why are you looking at me? Why are you looking at me? Out of all people, Mark, what are you doing? Coming. <clears throat> Motherfucker. Okay, keep his attention. Gone. Got tank. Oh shit, there's a big boy there too. Got him. Gone. Pocket Devastator's got to go next, though. I just dropped a sickle right there if you want to try it. No, I'm good.
we may never be able to procreate again. Not unless we take out this bug menace. Uh, I just got the Plasma Scorch. Love it against bots. Yeah, it's really good against bots. I'm really surprised. It's damn good. Especially because there's like armored enemies that it actually works against, which is really nice. Like the Shield Bros, the, um, what else? Shield Bros, the Walkers. Not bad. I'm, I, Mark, I'm actually genuinely excited for, like, I want you to play Bellatro because I, I want to hear your thoughts. No, you, like, why are you putting that evil on me, dude? You know what's going to happen to me. Hear me gone. I fucked that up. Reloading. You're going to be gone. Does Super Earth hold, hold, hold elections? That'd be actually really interesting if there was, like, an election campaign. Run. Got him. Oh, I'm fucked. Jesus Christ. was way more chill think so yeah yeah i think i only died once on six wait till you try uh eight and nine where am i supposed to take this over this box no fucking I got burned by after he blew up. That's bullshit. I feel like the chainsaw dudes are super strong against the plas. Yeah, I just kinda noticed that. Yeah, they don't go down as fast as I thought that they would. Maybe I need to like take out their arms first instead. Super Earth election will determine what kind of temporary buffs. That'd be sick, actually. Like world, like a world buff system. Could you imagine something like that, where uh, like like we get to vote with managed democracy and like and like pick like what kind of things that we want to have happen in the future. That's like something that I I'm hoping that we see in the game at one point. I, I think it'd be really cool to see. Oh, I don't think I can go get my shit. I feel like I need to go get my shit. Oh, it's right here. I was like worried that it was like somewhere I couldn't find it. Good shit. The fuck happened to you? Uh oh. Oh, we got DC'd. Yeah. Okay, I stole my weapons. Good. I want my sickle back. That's all I want. Where are we taking this package? Orbital 
Incoming. I've got the package. Over here. This pistol slaps. Which one's that? The uh, revolver. Is that good? Yeah, it's okay. I think I like the auto pistol a little bit more. Higher ammo capacity. Oh shit. Good fire rate. It's a one shot. On the small dudes. Wait, do I not have the package anymore? No, it's... Allied destroyer joining squadron and deploying Helldiver. Oh. We got behind you. Audio's out right now. Error, no power. Oh, hey! Killed by leg drops. I didn't do it. Oh, you walked in front of the auto cannon. Wait, what? Yeah, it says no power. Oh, yeah, I see it. No, he's right. Right here where we jumped up the cliff. It's right here. I already, yeah, I have, we already have one over here, but it says that there's no power. I went up to the, the power station, but there wasn't anything there. Oh, okay. Whatever. Good eye, chat. Good eye. Sir Vigo, thank you for the uh, thank for the sub on Twitch, man. Thank you, appreciate that. I have no audio. I feel like Doctor Disrespect right now. Uh, well, that that happened to uh, while you were feeding the cat. One of the, uh, one of the other persons in here was said that they were having an audio problem. Yeah, audio is bugged. I can't hear anything other than my own guns and your guns. I can't hear my gun. I just hear all the screaming. Oh, his body popped up in front of me and killed me. That's cool. His arm flew up in front of me and I shot his arm. Sir Vigo with the tier, with the five gifted tier one subs. Thank you, man. Really appreciate that. Love your vids. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Super generous. Um, okay. Let's head... Oh, we have another one we have to... Where did the other package go? I think I dropped it up here, didn't I? We had two of them. Where'd the other one go? I don't know.
Bro, it was like right here. I don't know. Doesn't it normally show on the map? Yeah, it's not on the map. Like zero audio, this is so weird. Might have to do one of the call-in ones? No. No, because it says collect the encrypted hard drive. I think what happened is, I think one of us, I think it got blown off of the, um, blown off of the catwalk and went into the water. I think that's what ended up happening. So I like despawned it, because I know we had both of them at one point. Because we, two of us were carrying one. So yeah, so I think it responded back at its original position. I think that's exactly what happened. I'm addicted to Coke Zero. Yeah? Yeah, dude. I'm like... I'm, I'm working on getting a kidney stone right now. So now we go to... We take this one back to the original place again. Right? Same place. Oh, fuck. Drink water, Mark. Water's for... Jacks. When was the last time that I drank soda? I have no idea. Oh, I'm so fucking special. Oh. No, I just like, I, I, dude, it's just like, I, I'm like adverse to spending money. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Like, I'm adverse to spending money. That I recoil at the thought. And even right now, like, I need to go to one of my, like, one of my, I'm going to my cousin's wedding and I'm like, aha, uh -huh, the buy a plane ticket. <laughs> ah. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Grow your own herbs and make tea. Yeah. Here they come. A little overkill for the one bot that was still alive. This game is so weird without audio. It's so weird, isn't it? You just hear like the music and then like slight sounds in the background yeah, and the thing. That's, like... that's, um, yeah, I'm getting the exact same thing. Maybe that's why that guy DC'd. Mm, it it could have caused it. Yeah. Uh, it could have been caused by it, is what I should say. Game of the year, uninstall. Uninstall. We're done. GG's. Dropping package. I'm on the terminal. I trace and check and check. Uh. I actually there's like commands and stuff like that that I can get set up for um uh, just set up for chat actually for like uh, uh, like reminders for people like hey have some water you fucking thirsty bitch <laughs> Thank you. Mm. 
damn bugs at it again. But uh, the bugs aren't doing anything. Oh, like the game's bugs, yes. Probably. I think it has more to do with the automatons. Other way. Go the other way. Got it. Water is boring. Leaf juice. Hot leaf juice. Ew. Yeah, Mark, what do you think about that? You want some hot that leaf? Sounds... You want some hot leaf juice? That sounds terrible. I fucking love coffee, though. <laughs> I, 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 don't I love some hot coffee. bean juice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I realized how that sounded. Yeah, yeah, you did. Mark, do you like hot bean juice? You did. Uh, you did. Love me some hot bean juice. Oh my God. I just dropped a fucking ship on fucking Beak. Calling down a sentry. Calling in reinforcements. Okay, I guess it's time for us to get get the fuck out of here. Nice team kill. What are you talking about? I mean, nice teamwork. He broke the fall. That's what it was. He just broke the fall of the uh, the ship. Shield backpack would be pretty good if it wasn't used. If I wasn't using uh, recoilless rifle. Recoilless rifle's really good against the bots. Really good. I do, I do love sweet tea, though. So. The funny thing is, is that even with the uh, even with the audio fucked up, it doesn't really matter all that much because. It's not like you could hear the bots coming up from behind you anyway. Yeah, right? Damn commie bots. Just fucking sneaking up on you. Ninja. You don't even got a chance. It's ninja bots. Oh, I find the shield backpack also gets hit by rockets that normally pass by you. Yeah, it probably does increase your hitbox, doesn't it? I can tell you I've seen sh uh, that, and I've also, for some odd reason, like, I I have a habit of shooting shields, like other people's shields. No, yeah, that dome is a larger hitbox. Yeah. <laughs> Where are they gonna come from? Where do you think they're gonna come from? I don't know. Is there any ammo around here? Probably on resupply. We ain't got what? Uh, we got, dude. We have thirty seconds. I don't know if I can wait.
That's actually a pretty good fucking orbital barrage. Jesus. Oh. Yeah, that was a really good orbital barrage. That wasn't the orbital barrage. Yeah. Well, something that you did killed me. Nah, that wouldn't have been me. Yeah, well, yeah, the game just lied to me. You're right. It okay. lied to me earlier, apparently, too, Mark. It, it said it you did. killed me. It did lie to you earlier, Oh, so it lied to you, but, but it doesn't lie to yeah, you. Oh, yeah. okay. It lies I'm to... Just, uh, yeah, I, it, it tells, I, it tells you know. the truth, but lies to me, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand why you're having a hard time understanding this. Wow. Wow. Honestly, sometimes I feel like I would be surprised by the things you say, and then now I realize I shouldn't be surprised. I shouldn't be surprised at all. Where you're standing. Bot tactics incorrect info break up the team. Yeah. Yeah. Is everyone is there everyone running light armor 99% of the time? First is bugs for sure, but for bots, it's probably better to use like medium or medium or heavy. But probably not heavy, because like I like the taxes for wearing heavy armor are like too high. It doesn't balance the tax out. Is too damn high. I always wear medium. I love light on bugs. I love light on bugs. If they can't catch me, they can't kill me. What is the best gun? Whatever one you like. Yep. Ellie. Being fully transparent, you literally can just use whatever you want. There's no like, oh, this is the most overpowered option or anything like that. Just pick and play with what you like and whatever feels the best for you. Uh, I, when I was level 15, I really liked the SMG. Versus bots? Uh, weapons that are good versus bots. I don't know. Folks in chat will probably help you out. Yeah, don't feel pressured to feel like you need to use certain weapons in certain situ- I mean, certain weapons are going to be better for certain situations because the game does have you know, like certain things are just more effective for certain objectives, certain enemies, things like that. But yeah. Ally destroyer has left squadron. How many do you have left on that, uh, on that mission? Thing. One. One more. Cool. Ready for Uno mas. Mission coordinates lost. Hell pods primed. Hell pods primed. I just took a I just took a slight glance at my uh at, at like the YouTube app real quick and realized that there's like a sh there's so many people that are upset. <laughs> Everybody's focused in on one thing that I said. People are upset with my video because I said, you know, there really aren't a lot of good PVE options outside of outside of Destiny 2. And then people are like, oh, okay, let's just pretend like Warframe doesn't exist. Let's pretend like like the division doesn't exist. It's like, okay, I'm sorry, dude. Like I I, I didn't write that into my into my script. I should have. I think it's because I didn't clarify the way that I probably should have, which still would have probably included divi the division, to be honest with you. I think I'm going to run an ammo backpack. I think that's what I'm going to do. Ammo backpack. You got to make an yeah. apology video now. Yeah, I know. I feel like I do every time I make a video. Uh, sad music, and you need to like uh, gas gaslight your apology. Oh, hardcore. I'm, I'm sorry that I made the community. I'm sorry that the community feels this way. 
but I, I really need you guys that. but I really I want you guys to also see it from my perspective and how I feel yeah I, I'm sorry if that hurt your feelings but I can't I can't control yeah. your feelings yeah I think the one thing that like kind of escapes people's like like I don't know sometimes you just leave some things out it is what it is unless it's like incredibly valuable information it gets left out You need to dress your cat up as a dog for a video. <laughs> True. True. Uh, Put funny. dog ears on the cat. Like the dog from uh, the Grinch. <laughs> yeah. 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 Jesus fucking. Good Lord. Uh. Oh, wow. Super, super samples. Is that like a uh, super salad? Democracy's on its way. Democracy's on right. its way. I got ammo in my backpack. If anybody needs the ammo, that's where it's on my backpack. Oh, it didn't, it didn't actually hit the guys that it needed to. That's awesome. I'm dead. That's awesome. They somehow were unscathed from the nuke that literally just got dropped on all of them to destroy everything around them but them. They're just sitting there standing there looking at me like... Did you really just throw us towards the water? No. I watched you do it. Why are you yelling? Fucking democracy. I threw you away from the bad guys. Come on, man. On oh, my leg. My legs hurt. I think we're the follow-over on Twitch. God. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Jesus. Was that a rocket devastator, like, off in the background? Yeah, way out, yeah, way out over there. He's what over an there. actually... What an absolute asshole. Is he dead? He almost yeah, killed you. Not today! Yeah. Not today! What are you doing? Why are you trying to piss off things that are like, oh, that makes sense. I'm not sense. trying. I am not trying to piss them off. I am well, successfully pissing them off. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. So one of the things you want to try to do, like the, the higher we start to push like into other difficulties is not piss off like patrols. Like, try to avoid patrols. Otherwise, like, a patrol is going to lead into us running into another patrol, which leads into drop ships, which leads into another patrol, and then you're just stuck in a loop of fighting for your life. You know, I actually take offense. Somebody, somebody was talking about, like, one of the most, uh, one of the recent weapons and how, uh... Um, it has how it has the best sight. I actually think the scorch actually oh doesn't God. have too bad of a, too bad of a sight. So where's the art at? Jesus Christ! Oh, there it is over that way. All right. Warning, you, are in range of enemy artillery. you uh, I know you're gonna keep telling me until I go kill it. They do need to fix that, genuinely. G genuinely. You guys want to start this up?
They're right there. I still missed. That sucks. What was up with that? Like, do you see how it came in and it just like fucking lifted off real quick? Gave you more ammo. That is not good. Shit. Yes, I know. Shit. I was working so hard. But I was just, just making sure you know, hey, you are in range of enemy artillery. Love this game though. Yeah, I know. I do love the game. Need ammo? No, I think I'm good for now. You're not, your back's empty. Oh, my back's full. There's one missing. Yep, not now. Missing two. Package acquired. Dropping package. One more somewhere. Hey. Where the fuck is it? Hey, you got it. Oh, 
that's bullshit. I always love seeing like rocket devastators take out a rocket devastator in front of them because the one behind them fires and shoots the one shoots the one next to him. Okay. Let's get to work. Uh as an autocannon user on bot missions, I learned the deployable shield. Uh yeah. Yeah, I do you know what one of the things I'm unironically really looking forward to is uh deployable cover. Uh, like a little bit, but I, I think it's just going to be, uh, I, I just, I just think it's going to be like really useful. That's all. Like it has a lot of use cases, especially in a game like, in a game like this, because, uh, there's a lot of times that you run into a spot where you just have nowhere to get cover. Then you need cover. It's gonna be really good for bots. That's fucking great. Oh, fuck off. Oh, come the fuck on. What is this? That's probably a waste. Oh, out of ammo. Thank you. Why are you running towards your own eagle? Oh, there was like a. There was like no, a I, was uh, uh, I thought I thought you threw it. It looked like you threw it. I was like, what the fuck? Oh no. Somebody can shoot in the back. I'm gonna turn it around. Yeah. There, there we go. go. I was going down to refill my ammo backpack. We can't do anything until this tank despawns. Did that? What me? Still despawn eventually. Oh, you got it. Move. 
I hope the cover can stop melee units uh, from destroying it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be like one of the really difficult things for them to try to be able to um, balance with this is uh, like making things not too not too armored, but armored enough for their, that they're still useful. Um, that's one of the problems that I know the Walker has against bots specifically is like walkers suck like the the mechs suck against bots because they just get shredded by rockets within seconds because they're just big huge walking cover like targets so they're just not very good i wasn't even looking Oh, nice. I'm looking forward to the kill. Dude, the Quasar Cannon legit looks awesome. Like, seriously, it does. Uh, kill the things, don't just... I was reloading. Oh, I thought you were down. No. Son of a bitch. Yeah, deployable cover would be really nice here, actually. <laughs> Speaking of. Oh, fuck. Behind you, Mark. Yeah, I'm fucked too. It is what it is. Oh my god. I'm dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sculpture. Ooh. Reinforcing. That sucks. Request approved. Reinforcements on the way. Okay. I'm okay. Oh, God. Oh, because I'm in the middle of an open field in front of a tank. Yeah, that would probably be a bad, bad thing, yeah. There's just not. Is there one shooting through a fucking rock? Jesus. There's nowhere to go. We have to clear them out before we can start it over. Oh, there goes my audio again. Man, Arrowhead Studios, man, they can't catch a break. Every time they fix one thing, they break another. <laughs> Poor guys.
like when I lose my audio the same time you do. Yeah, it's probably a, a like a, a match glitch. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't there be? There should be like at least another six or seven. Okay. This place sucks. <laughs> this place sucks. This is rough. This is rough. Yeah. Yeah, these open fields like this is it's tough, dude. I'll do. I'm also looking forward to the nuke too. There's like a few other things that I saw like in the leaks and I, I like, I really just didn't want to make a video that was like about leaks and that was it. You know what I mean? I just didn't want to do like, oh, hey guys, these are the leaks. Cause I'm like, I've already seen like 40 videos on that shit. I'm like, I, I just want to be one of the, I don't want to be one of those channels. I think that like taking that information and like disseminating it and trying to make it to make it into something a little bit more palatable is probably uh far more, uh, far more enjoyable for a viewer. That makes any sense. Minigun? Yeah. Did they say there was going to be a minigun? I saw there was one for like the, um, like a, like a couple different mech variants that I've seen. Dual auto cannon variant, fi uh, flamethrower variant, uh, rocket variant. I'm going to let you guys res because I, uh, I'm already towards the next objective. Meow. Yeah. Why? Res me in the water. I got the terminal. Yeah. yeah. Come on. <laughs> oh, couldn't see the water. <laughs> yeah. That's not like Mark. Mark direct Mark turned directly at the water and threw the beacon oh in there. I watched God. him do it. Oh my god. It was next to the water, not in it. I saw the intent in your eyes. No, I was trying to point you away from the bad guys. Engage in terminal.
Drop ship. I got the terminal. Oh, oh, fuck. I didn't, I didn't hear them. I didn't hear where the drop drop ship came in. So I had no idea they were all right behind me. What do you want? I can't see the screen, bud. You need to lay down. Tank to your left. Problem is they're both one's aggro to me and the other one's aggro to you. There's nothing I can do. I'm fucked here. I gotta piss. <laughs> yep. That was perfect. One was aggro to me, the other one was aggro to you, so I couldn't get behind the one aggro to you. And vice versa. Good luck, Ellie. We believe in you. Survive. You gotta survive. You're right. G G <laughs> Oh, one hell diver available. Survive. Yeah. Could be a spawn patrol. They had a tank in the front. Yeah, there was like there was Drop three tanks and a bunch of other stuff like directly on top of the um the objective all at once. And I couldn't and the problem is like with the with the uh um uh, with the audio bug, I I couldn't hear that they were behind me. I didn't even hear the ships come in. I looked in the sky, and the only place I didn't look was directly behind me, and that's exactly where they were. Big sad. Oh boy. Not me. 
Jesus Christ. Oh, there's no fucking way. Don't go over there. That's water. The game no crashed. Destroyer has left the squadron. Taking a look at a couple things real quick. Taking a look. Let me see this real quick. I want to know. I got to know. Oh, show me that yet. Oh, boy. Here we go. I think one of the only fucking uh, media sites that's probably going to survive is going to be like uh, Game Informer. Because they actually write articles about games. Game Informer? Yeah. Uh, I'd say PC Gamer as well. Yeah. I think PC Gamer does a rel like a pretty good job for the most part. I I've never really like, I've always liked the writing. Um. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I think that's. Uh. I think that'd be all right. God damn it! Come on, palm fingers. Oh my god. And of course they all drop like exactly where I put my turret. So they're just going to kill the turret the first second they get. First chance they get. Turret's going to be gone. That sucks. Get them fucking legs moving. Oh, we're on the edge. I don't think we're gonna be able to make it that way. I'd love to though. Fuck, I'm so fucked over here. Think we can make it through there without going off the map? We can try. Two of us. Oh, thank you. Five minutes remaining. I repeat, five minutes remaining. Request approved. Deploy reinforcements. Jesus. Oh, we're so fucked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deployable shield, just drop a tank right on top of him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is horrendous. Jesus, man. I like bot maps set on like seven plus difficulty after 15 minutes is just like hell on earth. It's just so bad.
What, just disconnected you and did it disconnect you or crash, Mark? Uh, it fucking crashed. Oh, wow. I haven't had a crash. I think we've only ever had one. It was when I first, when I first downloaded the game, when it first came out. Outside of that, I haven't well, really had any like crashes. I, while I was dead, I tapped out. And then it oh, was yeah. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe the, maybe the anti-cheat didn't like that. Uh, possible. Oh, wait. Uh, this objective specifically brings in, uh, yeah, I know, I know. That's the, that's the part that, that's the part that sucks about this one specifically is that, uh, it, it immediately starts dropping in, uh, uh, immediately starts dropping in, uh, you know, ships the minute that you start hitting the controls and activating the, uh, the thing. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. You may proceed to extraction when ready. <clears throat> uh, since I've been having performance problems with Dragon's Dogma 2, I think I will play the first one instead. Never played that one. Oh, totally worth it. It's what I told people to do originally. I was like, you know, before Dragon's Dogma 2 even came out, I said, like, Dragon's Dogma 1 was on sale at the time for like four or five bucks like incredible deal you easily be able to pull 100 hours out of that game if not more and then and then go into dragon's dogma 2 i actually still suggested for the people that are waiting to play dragon's dogma dragon's dogma 2 fuck it why why play the game that doesn't work when you can play the game that does and honestly has more content I'm, in in my in my yes it does have more content it has more content bitter black isle and the end and the everfall dungeon are fucking goaded I think the reason why I'm kind of sour about all of that is specifically because like I was looking forward to seeing like, you know, a fleshed out ver like an even more fleshed out version of Bitter Black Isle or, or Everfall. I was looking forward to something like that. First game well, like, is, yeah, first game is like, fire. My biggest, my biggest, well, I don't want to spoil. No, game. I don't want to talk about the end game or end of the game, no. Uh, there's some good mods for it to make it look better, uh, as well as some quality of life mods too. Yeah, but the problem is like I, I know that the like the one is like really I think I think the one mod for the game is for um, like 40 not 40 cards 40 40 series cards that help like fix some of the frame rate issues and stuff. I didn't, oh oh you're talking about for the mods for the first game. Yeah, there are some mods for the first, really good mods for the first game. Reinforcement up. Reinforcement available. Oh, I crashed. Did you? No, almost. Oh no, I got my audio back. Nope, I crashed. <laughs> Faked out. <laughs> Accept and report. Well, that was worth it. <laughs> that was so worth it. What the fuck? God damn it, Arrow. God damn it, Arrowhead. I love it. I love how they like every single time they post a fix or post a patch. The like they like the game just yeah, something else comes into the game. Like some other type of issue starts coming up. I wonder. You know, the thing is, is that like, and this is more, this is more uh, conspiracy theory than anything else. But I wonder with like how aggressive some of these like anti cheat programs and anti piracy programs have gotten over the years. How often? Um, how often those are becoming the issues that are coming into conflict with some of these games? You know what I mean? You know what's weird? Uh, so I downloaded, uh, this is on the same, the same, uh, line. So I downloaded a while back the, uh, 
mods for Elden Ring for like the randomized loot and shit like that, right? Yeah. Uh, I went to go, I downloaded, uh, I re reinstalled uh, Elden Ring because it's like, you know what, shit, I need to start a fresh run, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. uh, it says there, uh, there's a problem with my uh, anti-cheat. Hmm. It, it won't even launch the game. So oh, that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's it's getting too it's getting like too invasive now where like they don't want to they don't want you to mod. They don't even want you to do shit with your game. I saw that there was I, I saw that Gamers Nexus were trying to run uh multiple performance tests and they were forced to buy five different versions of the game because after you've switched uh after you've switched the machine like four time four or five times, it bricks the game because of uh because of the uh anti-cheat that's or the anti-piracy uh uh deno because of de novo yeah so gamers nexus had to buy five copies of the game to be able to switch with enough machines to get enough data for them to be able to you know compile something that was worthwhile isn't that fucking crazy that's fucking insane something that you own and you're not allowed to be able to switch it from machine to machine to machine because well you know uh piracy reasons i guess the funny thing is, is that like if they just made, if they would just make games more available and affordable, then I don't think it, like here's the thing: how many people do you think pirated Baldur's Gate three? I'd probably say less than one percent, maybe two percent. Be my guess. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. So, and, and that's the thing. I think like the more, um, like the higher quality of the game that you make where people like appreciate it more, the, uh, more available you make it where you have regional pricing. So I know like, I'm pretty sure Baldur's Gate three had regional pricing. And then also on top of that, like the more competitive or competitively you price something, the less likely you are to have your games pirated, but the more bullshit that you pull the more, more dumb shit that you put into your game. Um, then yeah, the more bullshit you're going to have. Uh yeah, and Nintendo. I, mean, I don't know why it's like got, banning got like old, messages. It's weird. Old ROMs. Yeah. And whatnot, and I, and I get that, but there's also you get that conversation of game preservation, right? Yeah. Um. So I, I get that on the old ROMs. Uh, Nintendo gets attacked. Uh, on, specifically on the Switch. Uh, now a lot than they have been. Um. But it's because they charge seventy dollar game seventy dollars for games that aren't seventy dollars. Yeah, know what I mean, yeah, that's um, the other thing too. Yeah, are you trying to tell me Switch games are seventy dollars? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, chat. That is it for me for the evening. I'm gonna get myself some dinner and chill out for the rest of the night. Um, tomorrow is Thursday. See, this is the problem, man. See, when like I so, saw, like, I took a day off on Monday, which then forced me to record on Tuesday, which then makes me stream on Wednesday. But normally I want to post another video on Friday, which means that I wouldn't be able to stream tomorrow unless I streamed later because I need to write and I need to come up with something else. Unless I just don't make two videos this week. But that's that, that would no. be the yeah, that'd be the first time that I've done that in like a year. What? Yeah. Yeah, make make your video, man. Yeah, make I'll do schedule. that. I'll do that, and then I'll I'll stream. Maybe I'll do like a later stream, uh, tomorrow. But if not, then I'll just stream on Friday and Saturday. I think that's what I'll do. Adjust your schedule for the week. Well, I mean, like I, that means it's shifting. It shifts everything forward basically, and it shifts it all out of whack. Uh, so it's just weird. It feels foreign more than anything else. But I do actually. I wanted to post videos on Friday, so that's not a big deal. So I think that. Uh, I think that. Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll probably try to make a video tomorrow. I have no idea on what yet, so I'll have to figure that out. But yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you all for the subs and the memberships and everything like that today. Uh, super chats as well. Appreciate that. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, I will see you guys back on stream on uh, either fr either tomorrow night, and if not tomorrow night, then it'll be, then it'll be Friday uh, afternoon, and we'll be... Uh, either playing this or probably playing, uh, maybe we'll play some Dragon's Dogma 2 uh, or something like that. Uh, outside of that, that's all I got. So, thank you guys for hanging out. Stay cool, stay righteous, stay safe. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening.